Are you happy to be there, Lord? Praise Him. Praise Him. God is indeed a wonderful God. Amen. He is too awesome. Praise His holy name. The man said, Amen. I am determined to hold out to the end. He said, Jesus is with me. On Him I can depend. For I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. That's faith in Praise Him. Praise Him. And there are many people um, that, 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 um, that say they have salvation and they don't have it. But this song might say, Feel it in his soul. Praise his own name. He said, I am determined to hold out to the end. Greetings to the saints of the mighty God. Greetings to the spirit of the living God. Greetings to the ministers and the wives of the ministers. The wonderful saints in the house and online. The visiting loved ones. Amen. On the line. Amen. Greetings this morning, this afternoon. Praise God. Morning in some countries, afternoon in some. Praise Him. I give God thanks for the privilege to stand in His house. Amen. Knowing that He didn't have to do it, but He did. Praise Him. If see man say He woke me up this morning and started with me on my way. Praise His holy name. David said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Is his name worthy? Praise, praise his holy name. Give, praise him, give him a praise in his name. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. I am determined to hold on to the end. Amen. Brethren, when I think of his goodness and the things he has done for me, my soul often cry out, hallelujah, that God for saving me. Praise his holy name. This time in Brethren, I was feeling some different little things in the week. And Bridget, I made a prayer to the Lord. And I, Bridget, yesterday, just before sunset, I got a call. Amen. And someone prayed with me. Praise his holy name. It's got a good God. And I was sitting there saying, trying to think of, just like Gideon, like, um, could I get a double double blessing? And somebody called me like at 11 and prayed with me without me prompting them. Praise the soul in them. God put it on their mind to call me to pray with me. And everything in the both of them pray are the things that were troubling me. God is a good God. And He always will be God. Bless the name of Jesus. He's the one that walked with the Hebrew boys through the fiery furnace. And I believe He's the same God today. He does not change. Praise His soul in them. Bless the name of the Lord. And so I thank God for his unchanging hands and his blessings on us, the children of men. Praise his holy name. Amen. I want to give him thanks, as I said. Virginia, we're living in, a midst, in the midst of much danger. Yes, sir. We're in the midst of, amen, a pestilence yes, that is destroying. And, and every time you think that we're under control, this, this, it, it gets up again. And it's devouring um, close to 138,000 people have died, or a little bit more than that. We're talking about in the space of five months, that's what it has done. Praise Him. But God has spared you and me to sit here today. Use the time to worship, use the time to give Him adoration. upon our right hand. But before I even go any further, there's a there's a request. Um, there were there are some persons on the line and in other places. Not here, because the people here they understand the things that happen. I know it's Sabbath, but I just need to get it out of the way. There are a number of persons and the number is swelling that is trying to find out what is going on with this carpet here. So I'm just gonna explain it real quickly without breaking the sound. I'm just going to explain. Yes. So this is what you call like a, it's a regular carpet. It's like a doctor shows. You know when you put in your shoes? 
it's a cushion man. It's a. I don't know. It's 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 it. Yeah, yes, yeah. We didn't go up in the bush with it. Believe, I'm gonna explain it because there's a lot of people online who are wondering. Why is it that I'm the only one who uses it? They're wondering why is it? So this is a regular man. That chefs use a lot of chefs like you're talking about people stand a lot in my classroom. I'm a, as a public school teacher, I have it in my classroom too because I stand a lot. I, I have it at different stations, near the board where I teach, near the places where I sit. Even when I sit, I have one under my desk at my work that I have. So these, it's like a cushion. It's like what you put in your sole of your shoes. Yeah. And the reason why we started, I started using this. In the old church that we used to have, the wood, the, the, the floor was wood. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. And what is going on is that after a while I started developing ankle, knee, and back issues when you stand for Sabbath school. Sabbath school is the time of the day that you stand the longest. Yeah. Well, here, yeah. I'm not, I don't know it all the other assemblies, but here, yeah. Sabbath school, we spend a lot of time in Sabbath school. So the teacher, not only myself, would stand there perhaps um, in excess of two hours, two to three hours, most of average, three hours, I would yeah. say, yeah. most yeah. Sabbath. Um, the reason why Deacon Buchanan is the one that normally does it, this one Brother Riley did it sometime, Brother Romain do it, Deacon is sitting closest to it. But Riley and Brother Romain, they, they, they do, they, they're making sure that we're streaming. So Brother Deacon is the one that sits closest to it. The reason why I don't do it myself is that most of them I'm playing the bass or the, the music over there. So in terms of efficiency, it makes sense for somebody else to just put it up like what the Brother Riley do this. Rather than when the chorus ends or the song, I come up and be setting up everything. It's just that. Deacon and I don't have any like on, thing going on. on. He's not subservient to me. It's how we work together. Yes, Reggie, believe me, I, I have to explain it because it got to the highest level that I was called about it. Please explain the carpet. So I'm explaining that the carpet, it's a, it's something that you stand on just to help my back, my ankles, and my knees. It has nothing to do with any bush or zungo. Zungo big or something like that. It's a power mat. There's nothing like that. It's an ordinary. Um, it's an ordinary mat. The reason why the superintendents don't use it is that it's hard to stand on um, if you have any eels or elevation. It doesn't even matter how as, as small as it is, you can actually tumble over. It doesn't make sense when you're preaching because you have to move it and you can trip on it. But because we're not teaching and most is stationary here, that is why we use it. Again, I'm not the, one, the reason why the superintendents don't use it is that they explain to me that, Pastor, it's uncomfortable to stand on it when you have all the heels. You notice know, they don't sing on it either because it's uncomfortable to it. So, just to let the church know, there's nothing special about this man. In fact, it's used. It's not even, it's, it's yeah. It's just a man. So, Anybody get it? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just needed to say that. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. The next thing I wanted to say is that today, Sister Mary turned 83. She is, she found the right. I don't want to give her thanks for her. She can't be in the house of God. But brethren, in 1937, she was born. Praise his holy name. And God has blessed her like the prophet is honor. Praise the soul in there to be steadfast and movable along with Bishop Harrowdy. And today I just set up a blessing your way. Praise the soul in there. She want to be in the house of the Lord. But the time is hard. You know, wisdom and all of that and the rules that are put in place. But bet you could say, We love your sister Mary. Yeah. Yeah. She wanted to turn over your life to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Praise yeah. His 
Lord today. And while we're sending this blessing her way, I'm asking God to keep her. Praise his holy name. The older ones who have not been in the house of the Lord since March. Amen. We send our love to them, sister. Sing. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. May God have mercy and blessing. Mr. Sing, you're sitting there looking because I know you watch every side. Amen. I'm sending an extension to you too. Amen. Deep before it's too late. Amen. Praise his holy name. You're very happy in Sabbath every week. Amen. It's time to give up. Praise his holy name. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. So next year, this time, like Sister Mary, we can send one out to you. That amen, you have escaped by the skin of your teeth. Praise his holy name. Amen. I'm sending a love and a peace and a and a and a and a and a, and a, and a, and a calling you to the Lord. Praise Mr. Singh. Praise his holy name. The blessing of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise his holy name. Just a few things before. I touch the subject. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise 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 Ministers, let us keep doing what we do. We share the work, and that's important. Yes. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. And amen. Reggie, we respect one and one another. Praise the Lord, man. And we all share the work. Amen. That's important that we share the work. Amen. Nobody don't feel like that, but I didn't feel left out and pray. No, yeah. we share the work. Amen. We find everybody know their roles yeah. and their responsibilities, and we share the work. So again, I'm asking those on the line to please think pure. Yeah. When, when um, Reggie, this is the house of God. Yeah. It's ruled by spiritual power. Yeah. Praise His holy name. No, no food. You think say so? we could have all? I could do a folly to have this thing here and have that thing going on and, and we don't sit down under that. No, no we, it's, it's the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Preach, preach. This is so, it's, it's, it's okay. We don't have to talk about everything. But we give that thanks. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Preach, they would see that one. On, the true one where we come. <laughs> that the children are using. Praise the Lord. God is good. Yeah. Nevertheless, cool. we're going to move forward. What is the subject of the scripture reading? And the memory verse to this. Subject scripture and memory verse. Give me, give it to me. Subject of our lesson is the pity is the power of the poverty. My scripture reading is taken from Genesis 37, 1 to 36. Our memory verse is taken from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. This is well known in the stand and do it together. You stand, everybody stand and do this one together. One, two, three. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to bring you an expected end. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. That was somebody's fight scripture. Amen. This is the one of your fight scripture. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. We can adopt it today. This is our fight scripture today. Amen. God, the God has given us, Amen, His word. Praise his holy name. It was directed to his people. And if you're in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. And so, brethren, you can take this positive word to yourself. Just as though if we disobey and rebel, we're going to get the, the, the negative, the dumb word, the, the war. Please, brethren, lift you can get the blessed word. Praise his holy name. The pit is a part of the package. Thank you, Sister Tanjana, for your commentary this morning. We continue the tradition of saying well done because it was well done. I'm not seeing one that I have to go back so they never do one thing. I'm not I'm not sure chance. So I'm gonna say that you did well again. In here she explained that amen that um the pit is a part of the package and she used the scripture reading and she and explained Amen Genesis 37 she explained the story as one of her favorites and she brought out the point that Joseph's entry into the pit was a part of the expectation of his journey. Praise God. Amen. So we have the subject here today. The subject says the pit is a part of the package. The pit is a part of the package. What came to your spirit, Brother Riley, when you see a subject like this? Brother Riley, the pit is a part of the package. What what, what came into your spirit? What has blessed you about this, this topic? What does it mean and how has it blessed you? Amen. Brother Jonathan. Clap him as he, as he spoke right there. Right there. Uh, what you got? Uh, what was the subject? 
resonated with you? What do you think? All right, praise the Lord. What do you have to say? Greetings to everyone in Jesus' name. Um, as the subject says, the pit is a part of the package. Um, I was, we had service, our studies last night, and I was saying to them, when I heard about, when I saw the, the part that said package, I, I thought about a car, when you're, when you're buying a brand new car. Yes. You know, you have different, different um, things you can get, like different packages, I think Chats. they call it, you know, options. Yes. Yeah, they call it options, yes. where if you want the sporty version, um, you have oh. a different engine, yes. and you have yes. different, different things. Yes. But sometimes when you read what's in it, you're like, oh, I don't necessarily need this, need this. But to get the, the engine I want, I can get the color I want, I can get this, and I have to go with all of that. And I was saying, that is what this pit is. Um, the pit isn't just a literal pit, it is a situation, a challenge, uh, uh, things that we have to go through. And it's not something that we should run away from, it's something that we should expect, it's something that we're all going to experience. And the pit, our pit isn't the same as everybody else. My pit isn't the same as Bella Romains, it's not the same as Sister Clark or Sister Tanjana. It's a different pit. Um, Jeremiah's pit had miracles. Um, <laughs> Joseph's pit was, was was empty. Basically, there was nothing in it. Um, they can even consider Daniel was in a pit in a sense. He was in the lions den, and when he said it sealed up, there were lions in it. There's going to be different different pits. And as I was reading the, the scripture reading today, there was something that stood out to me. Sometimes your pit is what saves you from death. Because yes. when I was looking at Joseph. The option was death yeah. or the pit. Yeah. And sometimes we're so afraid to go into the pit, not knowing that's what is saving our lives, not knowing that's yeah. what is, is giving us another chance and another day. And I was saying to the brethren that there was a scripture in um, Isaiah 38, verse 17. And the one line that I took out it was, it talks about the pit of corruption. And I was saying to them that our pits can be one of corruption where we're not getting nothing out of it. Or it can be one where we learn you know, different situations. Yeah. Sister Tanjana talked about it that way. We're going to we do more fast, we do more reading, we do more of these things. And I was saying that I don't want my pit to just be one where I'm just suffering all of the time and there's nothing that comes out of it. It should be one that when we're going, we come out and we get better. Um, you know, last night they were saying that, um, you know, when Joseph went to the pit, it's almost probably saying to me, like, no, we can't get no worse than this. It, you know, I was in the pit, I was betrayed by my, my brothers, I was betrayed by the people who I, who I, you know, put my trust in. But there's a scripture that says, when mother and father forsake me, you know, the Lord will take you up. And I'm saying that, you know, despite the situation, despite, you know, what you're in, the pit is there. And the pit will be an experience that you will have to go through. Will it be one that you allow the God to you? Will, you, will it be one that you allow God to, to, to teach you something, to, to, to get, get you better, to make you a better person, to be a better child of Him? And will it be one that when you go through it, you'll come up worse? I think about even Joe, when he was in a situation, he never cursed. When anybody ah, tell him to do it, he never cursed. And I almost stopped me and do it, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, he held down his integrity. And that's the important part. When you're in the pit, will you remain? The good and faithful servant, I will at the end of it will be someone where God can't even recommend, where God can't even say, Have you considered my my servant, brother Riley, or pastor, or deacon, or evangel, all these different things? Or will you be someone where God look at you and he, he scoffs at you and he scorns, or will you laugh at the calamity? Just these are just my few words. Praise the Lord. Praise the Are you blessed? Amen. Are you blessed? But I really well done. Amen. 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 The pit is a metaphor. Yes. He said it stands for a challenge. Yes. I love what he also said. I wrote it down too. It stands for a better option than yes. that. In Joseph's case, the pit was a better option yeah. than the original plan they had. Then yes. say, here comes the dreamer. We all slay him. Yes. And somebody had mercy. Yes. The eldest looked, Reuben, and he decided that that option would be rough because he would be, being the firstborn, we know that he would be almost be responsible, yes. Yes. liable for yes. what's going to happen. Yes. And so Reuben spoke up. So put him in the pit. Let's delay this. He was trying to delay. In his mind, you could tell how divided these boys were. And that 
that division work to Joseph's advantage? Because at first, Reuben says, uh, let's delay, let's put him in the pit, because Reuben planned for his comeback in our life. Yes, yes, sneak, sneak yes. him out yes. and yes. carry him back home. Yes. So if we just get a little taste of a punishment, a little thing for his brashness, a little thing for those dream dreams he's been dreaming. I like the wake up call. <laughs> Ruben, so you got to be dreaming, man. You dream too much. So you're gonna sleep a little bit, sleep rough a little bit. But my eyes do not But when he came back, in God, because Judah come in, Judah come in, and still the show with a different plan. So if we kill him, if we kill him. We ain't gonna make no money. We ain't gonna be for nothing. We're gonna make a good thing I'll fight. Anybody get what's going on? Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love God. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of things I, where I, I, get, I got so much. Every time I read it, there was a different thing I got from it. Praise the Lord. I look at the fact that Reuben Preacher lost some of his, lost some of his, his stance as the eldest one. Think about what I'm saying. You know, if you read some of the chapters back, the man messed with Builder. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Jacob had Leah and Rachel, but he had also children by their handmaids, yes. Builder and Zilpha. Yes. So Reuben was one who got messed with his father's concubine. And Jacob was happy about it. God never pleased him. No, so if you notice, his counsel started. To fall even right here you saw where his plan was to do something and God totally changed it. God let them listen to the one that would be kind of the new leader. If you look at the church, if you look at it right after Reuben was Simeon and Levi, you know what those two boys did? Yep. They killed yep. men of Shechem. Oh Jesus, yes, yes, they yes, killed it. So, Virgin, number one, two, and three mess up so yes, much. Yes, yes, and number four, number two, two awesome yes, yes, But the Bible yes, said it's scepter. Shall not depart from Judah. Now, a Lord giver from between his feet. When Jacob was blessing them in chapter 49, in 48 or 49, he talked about this thing that Reuben did. And then he talked about the anger of Levi and, and Simeon. And then he said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a Lord give her from between his feet. So from this time, Judah started, his, his word started to praise God, um, make sense, start to, start to come forward, praise his holy name. But if you notice, when they got to the end of Egypt, who was able to stand and, and give his child as a ransom? See him, Judah. So preaching what I'm saying to you, when you read this, find the joy from God, man. Find Amen. what God is trying to bless us with. Praise His holy name. Amen. The pit was a part of Joseph's package. Yes, Amen. Praise His holy name. Amen. But I want to thank you so much. Amen. A pit church is a hole in the ground. Yes. It's not just, it's not a cave. It's not something that is often um, natural. Often pits are man-made. Yes. You notice that? Yes. When, when it's natural, they call it ravi in and caves and, and, and um, impressions and different things. But when man make it most, they call it pits. I don't have to be angry. It could be also um, natural. But what I notice is that it's a hole in the ground. Yes. I love that. Sister Tim John and Brother Boy brought out the fact that there was nothing in it yes. when Joseph was thrown into it. It was, the Bible said, it, it, it didn't have any water in it. No, it was empty. Mm -hmm. A pit that is lodged so far out there. Do you know that animals can fall in there? Oh, and preacher, guess what? After they cry, 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 they die in there. Because the other animal can't get them up. So in the air preacher is often stink. The stink and the fog said. You see dry bones in the air preacher. All kind of things fall in that thing and sickly in it. Sometimes um bush. Look a bush growing there. 
Snake can crawl up and down in there. Yes, Some things that can crawl up and down. If you notice, most of the things that can crawl. Yeah. And I'm noticing that by day it can be super hot. Yeah. Because there are people and places in the world who cook in the earth like Hawaii. They're yeah. talking about putting like a whole animal that they season in the ground and cover it up. And after four or five hours, they take it back out and it's cooked. Yes. So in the ground preacher, it can be super hot in the day. And guess what I feel at night? Super cold. So Joseph was facing a rough situation. But Joseph was blessed because God picked the pit that he was going to get, he would fall into. And God made sure it was there to receive him. I love what Brother Riley said that Daniel had, was in a pit too. Oh, yeah. But God picked the one that he was supposed to be in. He said that Jonah fell into a sort of pit. Yes. But God picked the one that he was supposed to be in. Yes. I am saying make sure that when you fall into a pit or when you're placed into a pit or when you buck up on your, on your pit it's the one that God chose for you. Yes. Because you have different types of pit. You have pit where you dig for your enemy and remember saying it, you know. And you're falling to it. Nobody gets it? Oh, sing out Jamaica who say everybody gets that pit. But he gets it from the word. The Proverbs say, you don't have to dig too. Because you're going to fall in the same one. So the pit is a metaphor for a dark, rough, um, Sometimes hot or cold, depending on the night or day place. And can I add sir, um, that um, it has dust in there. It has traps. Some people dig these pits as traps for animals. And so, whenever you get there, I hope it's the part of God's authorship, God's plan that you're there. Because you can dig your own pit. Come on up. Your own metaphor. Based on your attitudes. Based on your behaviors. You can dig yourself into a hole. And it's not God that have nobody put your cell one soul into it. And so, today, you are required to understand what the position you are in. Why am I here? How did I get here? Which leads me to talk about the path to the pit. Joseph started to get a word from God. Not like Moses and the others. He got it in dreams. He saw what would have been down the line. And as the word would say, Joseph told, you know, last night I get a dream, and Joseph told what happened. And the Bible said that the hatred that his brothers had for him started to step up to each into another match. First of all, his father loved him. Bridget, do you understand how powerful God is? Chapter 37 starts with Jacob dwelling in the land. And verse 2. Just introduce Joseph. Yes. Skip all of everybody down to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Because Joseph, God had a plan of redemption through him. Amen. It was through him that God would take Israel, take his people to a nation. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. And God would use him to preserve Israel's seed. And so, Joseph was introduced in verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. Imagine that. He didn't talk about Reuben and Levi. And Simeon, sorry, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Naphtali and God and Ash didn't talk about it, just went right to Joseph. So Joseph became, he came to the forefront here as an interesting fellow right now. And the Bible said that his father loved him. Yes. 
above the others. Right, all right, that's what happened. And Joseph here experienced love because he was the first child of Jacob's true love. Rachel. And what happened now, preacher, is that Joseph was given a coat of many colors. You don't see that as a big thing now because you have so much clothes in your closet. You have multiple shoes and many jackets and many different things. But imagine, take your time back to those ancient times. When you get a coat of many colors, you're talking about probably imported cloth, imported material. You're talking about it's expensive, it's specially woven. And imagine you're nomads, that's what I'm saying. These are people who are traveling. And Because um, if you read Hebrews 11, you talked about Abram sojourning in the land of promise as a strange country, dwelling with Isaac and Jacob, who are fellow heirs of the same promise. So they were just going around and traveling in the promised land. Praise his only name. Amen. And out of that, Jacob found time to get a special coat for Joseph. Probably imported, probably, probably specially made. And the rest of the he ate him because he didn't get a coat. Jealousy start to rise. Covetousness come on the forefront. And immediately after that, Joseph started his dreaming. In his first dream, he saw them paying obeisance to him. And the brother said, What? You? You are the scrubs. You are the last. You are the, you are, you don't know, you are the wash them. You are the only. I mean, Benjamin came after him, but you are way down. You're not different. You have to get up the past you. I will forget to you. And then he had another dream. We know the celestial bodies were included. Yeah, and now his parents. Yeah, and Jacob was like, hey, you know, yeah, you know, me get the part, you're bringing them home. Me? Yeah, and your mom, brother, bow down to you? Yeah. So, bridging up party, these people take dreams serious. And what happened, church, is that they couldn't see, but God had the specific things planned. For Joseph's life. Praise his holy name. The Bible said they hated him. Then he said they hated him the more. More and get. And the, 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 the hatred just went up. To the point that they wanted to kill him. What thoughts are you arguing? What thoughts are you arguing? How are your thoughts grown? If you feel on the words of God. And I'm talking about like seriously feeling on the words of God. There's no way you can get to this stage. Amen. There's something that should hold you back. Yes. Something correct you from the There's something that should correct you. Amen, sir. Let us say you saw something that you shouldn't even see. Amen. Like somebody's exposed. Your thought shouldn't start go all the way, all the way, all the way. No. You have something supposed to pull you back. Some black Today I am saying that those boys, nothing held them back. Thank God. And you could see them talking in groups. All the zilf are putting them on top. All the bills are putting them talking. All the, all the little children talking about the ones that are poor. But they all agree with one thing we don't like Joseph. And sometimes when you find yourself in a position where everybody don't like you, we can't see the end of. We only see, we are dwelling in, chapter, in our chapter 37, verse 1 on to verse 9. Mm -hmm. That's where we see. Yep. Nobody goes to chapter 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets to Genesis 49. Yeah. Everybody dwells in the Job 1 preacher. Yeah. Nobody goes to the Job 42. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, Sister Julian, when things get rough, stay the course. Amen. Because the challenge is a part of the package. But biting is a part of the package. God of mercy, when you develop a back of righteousness, people want to chew on it. Oh Jesus, they, get, they don't get it, preacher. When you put on the whole arm of God and your back is set in God, yes, persons who are behind this, 
preaching a prayer so bad by it against me. I am praying for you. Amen. I can't hear you. It's a compliment. Praise him. Find a bad man. Yes. Remember. You find it succulent and juicy. <laughs> so if you want to stay a mosquito, you can't stay, you can't stay in a back Bible. Psalm 15 is there. But it's Psalm 15 is there. We tell me that I put a Psalm 15 is there. Anybody get what I'm saying? The path to the pit may be rough, sister. Ken. Sitting in a dark stink. But Richard Joseph wasn't the first person in a dark stink, lonely place. Noah was there too. Amen. But Noah was safe. Amen. Amen. The ark was kind of the same thing. Dark stink with all those animals in there. Imagine the ark. But it was the only place that was safe. One just like what uh, one window. Just like what our brother Riley said. Imagine the pit was the one place of safety because the other option was death. So sometimes your pit by the road, as rough as it is, is going to propel you to the place where God intended you to be. Because by yourself, you're not going to just end up and go down where you're supposed to go. You're not going to say, Daddy, I'm going to take a trip down to Egypt. No, I'll let you go. God knows that Joseph is not going to let you go. Um, Jacob is not going to let you go. Come on. Anybody get who Jacob was? He knows that Joseph could have known Egypt by himself. So God had to transport him there another way. Come on. Praise him. Praise his holy name. Amen. Sister, I challenge you. If one of your daughters says, I'm going to go to better roots to live. Better who? Better who? <laughs> Which country is that? What continent? Which church is there? You're not going nowhere. You know what they go. So jo Jacob would not let Joseph go. But God, he had to be in Egypt. And he had to be in the, God had a, 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 a 13 year plan. Sister Anne, the man need preparation to preserve the seed of, oh bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Van Clark, we are ministers and God have to put us through different things to preserve Zion. We don't want challenge. We don't want we want everything to be smooth sailing. If you want to preserve Zion, Deacon, if you want to preserve Zion, brother tomorrow, brother, brother Powell, all that brother Ruth, brother Taylor, brother Riley, brother Jamal, if you want to preserve the, the doctrine, if you want to preserve it, you have got to understand that the pit is a part of the package. Challenges. Bless the name of Jesus. So the pit is a metaphor for the challenges you're going to go through. It's, it, the pit um, is a metaphor for the obstacles and the hurdles. Also the options that God has to bring you to the place where he needs you to be. The package here is important because it means purpose. Package here means purpose. Plan. The package here is your book and God is the author. Praise his holy name. And I am in the package... When you think about a package, I love what Brother Riley says. It has multiple factors, multiple things, options in it. And so it's saying, Sister Daniel, that if you want to reach God's kingdom, expect there are times when you're going to be in a place where it's strange and tough and hard. But if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight the battle, He will bring you up out of the pit into a new place that you want to. That he is a part also of the family. God bless you. God keep you. The objective today is to remind, the objective is to remind the brethren of the challenges on the road to eternal life. We praise him. Question one. How unusual was Joseph's life of purpose? Genesis 37, 3 to 4. And 23 to 28. Somebody please read me up. Reason? A minute before. Amen. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and, and could not speak peaceably unto him. 
verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they that they spread Joseph out of Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gil Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let us not hold, and let us not and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by me the night merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph to Egypt. How unusual was Joseph's life of purpose? Uh, first, it speaks about um, his love for his father and the special um, care that he got, but also about the, the, the jealousy and the hatred that his brothers have for him, so, so that they decided to sell him. So it, it, um, his life of purpose was very unusual. Yeah. Yeah. He was loved and hated at the same time. There was a love-hate relationship. He was loved by his father, yeah. hated by his brothers. And we're going to come and discuss what that means for us. We're going to have a superintendent come, come back for who we did that. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise him, man. Praise the Lord. You just pray for it. Give him thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise him. I am blessed, brethren. Praise the Lord. I am blessed. Praise his name in the prayer. He said, that I thank God for my now. Praise God. Amen. I like it. I like it. I thank God for my now. Praise his holy name. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise him. Praise his name. Are you blessed? Yes. yes. You're on the line, amen. You're blessed also because you're being prayed for. I thank God for prayer time. Prayer is a time where we pause and, and uh, we acknowledge God's presence. And our need, we, we recognize our need. Amen, friend. So, right before we left, we saw where it said that it, Joseph had an unusual um, life. His brothers hated him, but his father loved him. How do you think he felt? Is anybody want to tell me? How do you think? What kind of dynamic is that? How would that shape your life? Where your father. And I guess your mother absolutely adored you and loved you. But your brother, brothers, all of them, together as a unit, they talk rough to you. The Bible said they did not speak, speak peaceably to him. Um, hey, you keep my camera. No! Um, you can't get someone. No! We can't come with you. No! Joseph probably heard more knows that they hated him. How do you think he felt? Yeah. Sister Tanjana, what you got? Brother yeah. Jamal, I'm coming to you next. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Greetings in Jesus' name. Greetings. I think part of Joseph resented his parents for treating him special because I feel like um, at his age, know in his family that all he wanted to do was be included with his siblings he was already separated by mother so I feel like Joseph would do anything to want to be a part with his brothers praise him sister Tanja has a, a take on it she thinks that um, there could be some some struggling in um, in in Joseph because all he wanted was to be included. And that great love they shared for him excluded him. That's an interesting thought. I'm coming to parents. Where you got parents? What do you think? 
Can I praise the Lord? Free as in. Uh, I was thinking, I was kind of thinking along the same lines as mm-hmm. Lewis and John. Yeah. So I really don't have anything different than others. So she really said all I was really thinking. So let me ask you this then. Uh, how do you think, Brother Jamal, how do you think parents should, um, uh, can parents, I'm going to this, can parents put their children in the pit then by loving them too much? Uh, can parents put their children in the pit for loving them too much? I can say yes, because it could, uh, it could, uh, in a sense, like change um, their behavior or their look at things, if that makes sense. Like if I'm always getting praise and love from my mother, then I'm just going to be almost addicted and used to that. So if I'm not getting that from somewhere else, it may, I may get depressed or sad. Not like there's anything seriously wrong, it's just I'm always used to being just the center of attention, loved by someone, so or by my parent, or my mom. So if I'm somewhere else and other people are getting the attention, I'm gonna want to maybe go, I will not say lash out, but just feel a certain type of way because I'm not getting that from another source. Clap him. Can you hear what he said? All right. Sister, Sister Buchanan, what you got? You have a lot to see over there. What you got? Yeah. I don't know you answering. Whatever you answer, I take it. You were saying spoil and praise the Lord. Praise no, I was saying what Jamal said. Um, I was saying that the person will be spoiled because they're used to getting all the love and attention and getting everything his way. And even, you know, they have the children's Bible movie chosen. And me and the boys love to watch it, and it's always a part, like um, Gabriel would say, like, because <laughs> in the movie, they sing a song, Miracle Child, to Joseph. So I always sing that song to Michael, as Gabriel's like, well, I'm a miracle child, too. And I'm like, okay, everybody's a miracle child, but I can see, like, where in the movie, he just wanted, Joseph just wanted to be included with his brothers. Like his father would keep him back for studies and everything like that, but he just he just wanted to sometimes just be normal, just be a part. So when you when you single out a person and love them too much, and there's a negative side to that as well, loving somebody too much or putting so much on a person, whether it's all your love or all the responsibility, because. I, th- I think it should be even now because that makes people turn out differently. As you see in Joseph's case, he was set up for something totally different, a part of God's plan. But I'm just thinking, I, when I think about just how I was thinking in my life, like the way I was raised, because I'm the oldest, all of the responsibilities on me, and all of the chores is on me. And to be in church and to sit up front is on me. Like all of those things were my duty, but looking at looking at that, I always felt like, okay, like my, my sister who's right under me, she would get invited to parties and everything, but I'm not because I'm too holy and I sit in the front and I, I sing or I do whatever, and so I'm not down with the crowd, I sit in the back, which is what my sister said. So I always looked at it like, why my parents have to, you know, I didn't think they loved me that, like, more than them, but I'm like, why I'm the one who have to be different? And I want to go out too, I want to do this, but it wasn't my scene, you know, I love to be in church and in worship and everything. So I, I, but I was looking at it a negative way growing up, like, I wish this was different, or we could share all the chores, or we can, you know, go out together, do this and do that, and I didn't see you know, down the plan, but when I look at our, how our lives are now, and how all of the stuff that I had to do, and I had to go through, and all of the ways that my parents almost singled me out for the task, or for anything that was going on, and how God worked it out to set my life up now, because now, you know, I'm a wife, and I have children, and I can take care of my home, and do everything, and even if we don't have it to go out all the time, or even if we do, I still want to be home and, you know, be with my family or whatever because of the way that I was raised. So God know that Joseph down the line, he would have to be, you know, ruler, overcome situations where people lied on him and threw him in a pit and all this kind of stuff, just like part of a wife, but it's because of his upbringing and the way
where he was raised. So we cannot see, as Brother Riley Riley said, that the pit can be a blessing too. It's it in, in the moment it don't look like that. But when you think when you see the outcome, when I see the outcome of my life versus my sister's lives and how everything is going on. I just have to give God thanks for the pit and for those mountains and valleys that I had to go through. And I'm more than sure that Joseph, when he really saw his brother in coming and he saw his dreams come to fruition, all he could do is give God thanks that God, you really knew what you were doing when I was down there. These Praise are my few words. Praise him, Amen. Amen. Worship the Lord, Amen. Clap your hands, brother. Brother Jamal, Sister Tanjana, and Sister Buchanan for your response. May I just say that in truth and in fact, that Joseph's unusual life of purpose started with God channeling how we had to think. To make it to where he ended, God had to channel him, channel him from he was young in that way. We are young. One set will absolutely love you, and one set will absolutely hate you. For him to survive the pit, his mind would have to be strong. Do you know what carried him in the pit? This father's love. Amen. That's what carried him in the pit. Make sure your love for God is so high that when the hatred seems to be high, you in your heart the love of God is so strong that it brings you through. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Your father's love should carry you. And brethren, when you find yourself um, sinking, 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 what should lift you up is your father's love. I'm talking about your heavenly father's love. Praise his holy name. And so Joseph had to be raised in that mindset because deacon, it was a microcosm of his whole life. If you think about it, he, he, was, he, he, he had to deal with the good times and the bad times. He had to deal with prison and fear as well. He had to deal with the pit. He had to deal with so many different um, yin and yang as they would call it. Two different things. So Joseph's brain was developed where he would run into Jacob's love. And every time he go outside, he walked into his brother's hatred. So guess what? When he go down to Egypt, he can, and he woke up as a slave being, as a slave be at the head of Potiphar's house. Do you know that every time he walked into Potiphar's presence, he felt Potiphar's respect. But when he go outside, he would feel Egyptian's hatred. How comes you all stay when around things over here? But his mind was already developed. His brain was on left side and right side. He got the love and the hate. He got all the, the, the things that he needed from those early stages to overcome. And Sister Buchanan, you're so right. All those times when you were you were um, singing and you were forced to go to this verse of the body and all of that, it seemed all that you were not having the fun. But right now, as you said, God was preparing you for the husband you would get. Amen. Does he have no party in God? No, he's a lad. Amen. He's a lad. Praise him. Deacon, they don't know. I know you. He can just have the man when he can love the, you know, love the outer. You know, when I was just talking about the time of year, that's the can. So God was preparing you to be a mother indeed. To be a wife indeed. To be a real woman of God indeed. <laughs> to be a Josephine. I love that brother. Brother Richard, we are sang the same time. We go for the new album coming up. Yeah. Running to his Josephine. Run away from the lion. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> so Brother Roach, it's true. God is preparing you. Um, he, had, he was preparing you. And all the persons on stream that we are going through something. The next question is what's going to fit you. Question two is going to fit you up to understand what you're going through. Question two. How could Joseph fit a bad experience be considered as uh, considered? As continuous bitterness or purposeful learning. Genesis 39, 2 to 6, 20 to 23. And then um, Genesis 48 to 15. Two readers. Chapter 9. Praise it. 
Um, Genesis 39 to 6 and 20 to 22. 20 to 6, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous, prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew that all he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a god goodly person and was fit and well favored. Twenty. And Joseph's master took him and put him put him in the prison, a place where the king prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it pros prosper. Thank you so much. Thank Praise you. God. Praise um, Sister Rhonda. Rhonda. Oh. Genesis 40, 8 to 15. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shut forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. Praise him. Sister um, Justin. How could Joseph's spit or valley experience be considered? A. As continuous bitterness or B. Purposeful learning. How would you consider it? I would consider, um, consider it um, as a purposeful learning because at the end of it, he ended up like saving many lives. I would say it was purposeful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister, sister Rhonda, um, would you consider it? As continuous bitterness or purposeful learning? I would say it's, it's purposeful learning because um, even though he was in the prison, he was able to interpret the dreams, which in, in fact would be able, because the butler would be able to tell Pharaoh that Joseph was able to, in, to you know, interpret. Mm -hmm. Interpret dreams. Which praise, praise the Lord. Where should the Lord? So the answer is purposeful learning. You have to consider your pit metaphor, your pit situation as purposeful. What am I going to learn from it? We have been saying this from the lesson start in this new quarter. From the first lesson in the quarter, we started talking about it. From the very first lesson. Put him on the whole arm of God. And then when we talked about suffering for Christ, we said the same things. That it is important that you learn the purpose. What is the purpose of your suffering? Why am I going through what I'm going through? Is it because I'm busy bagging other people matter? Or is it because 
Um, God have a plan and there's something that God wants me to learn out of it. Praise his holy name. Amen. And today we are learning that Joseph's experience was for purposeful learning. Everything that God put Joseph through, he had a specific plan for it. Everybody get it? Yeah. Think about the dreams he had as a child. He was learning that when you, when you articulate, when you say about your dream, everybody might not accept it. But it's going to be true. When, he, when God is telling you what it means, because guess what happened? Guess what happened? Guess what happened? Saying that dream was nothing. But Joseph was telling his brothers and his father what the dream, what the dream means. That's why they hate him so. Yes. Yes. So, brother, I wrote to me, I have a dream. And he said, why? Yeah. You know, some dreams that I was so and so. What's the child one dream? But they hated him because he says, this is the meaning of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And guess what happened now? That same talent. That same gift, that same thing, Sister Amelia, turned up some years later now, not in Potiphar's house. The dreams were not critical in Potiphar's house because everything Joseph said, touch was blessed. You never the need no dream lesson. Yes, yes, but in prison, yes, yes, yes. in prison, yes. God bring back the time. He brought back the gift yes, because now it was important for this gift. Because here, God, Sister Randa rightly said, God would put the, the link, the connection to fill his house with him in prison. He would not have gotten it in Potiphar's house because he would not be invited to, to Potiphar's parties. He would not have gotten it anywhere else taken. It would be out of place. But God would send the baker and the butler to the prison to meet Joseph and that's where his gift was, his gift sh yes. shown up. Now you're speaking in tongues. Now you've gotten something from God. I'm saying that God has another plan for you, another level for you. God has something else for you, I know you think it's going to take you. God has something where your spiritual life is going to go. But God is saying to you, I'm the, I may not use your gift when you're on the mountain top. Come on, you get the point right? God did not use Joseph's dream gifts when he was in Potiphar's house. And everything was going great. It was when he was in prison now. Come on. When he felt that I should not be here. If you look at Sister Randall's verse 14 and 15, he said, I should not even be in this house. Get bring me out of this house. Get me out of this prison. Come on. Because I don't belong here. So Joseph still was feeling pain. I don't want to think Joseph was in there chilling out like, hey, I'm in prison, I'm okay. Didn't have his pants dropped down and walking around and getting tattoos and all that kind of stuff. Joseph didn't think that he belonged there. And sometimes we get comfortable in our prison. Sometimes we get comfortable in our pit. And the pit is not somewhere that you stay, but you're still waiting on the Lord. But it's not somewhere that you get comfortable with. The test zone is not. Who, who likes to go to school and just be in a test all the time? There's a time when you're learning and a time when you get a test. And the test is a small part of the learning thing. Three hours out of a whole semester. So if you find that you're in a test 20 years, hello, ask God what's going on. Anybody know what is that? Joseph was not comfortable in the prison. No. He, after he interpreted, he said, Tell, tell, tell somebody about me because I need to get out of this house. I pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But God still wanted Joseph to gain some more experience. I said it, brethren. That when Joseph got to the pinnacle of his career as prime minister in Egypt, he had to deal with seven years of plenty. Yes, sir. God was purposeful in Joseph's life in allowing him to go into Potiphar's house and deal with years of plenty. For 13 years, think about it, from he was he was 17 when he got to Potiphar's house. And you, you need, he spent some years, an equal balance of time in the prison as in Potiphar's house, learning how to deal with many things. Everything he touched, Sister Rina, was a blessing in Potiphar's house. Everything he, the Bible said, in the house and in the field. Potiphar's account was going up. Corner grew double-double. Everything was just going up, brethren. 
in Potiphar's house, Joseph was the one in charge of the business, setting the finances, setting the accounting, setting the thing that is coming in. Joseph did all of that and he got relaxed. But God put a, 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 a pill in his balloon, Potiphar's wife. The only thing God didn't give him was the one that turned against him. Anybody listen to Sister Jacinth's reading? That Potiphar's wife sold him out. And Bridget, what I'm noticing is that Joseph, when he was thrown into the pit, his coat was taken. Anybody notice that? His coat was taken. His coat was taken. When he was getting out of Potiphar's house, his coat was taken. When God is bringing you to test, sometimes it takes something. Sometimes it's what is so valuable to you. The coat was his most valuable possession. It was what would convince Jacob that he was dead. Jacob would have searched high and low for him if they didn't bring back the bloody coat to say that he died. Anybody get this juice? Yes. If, if, if when he brought the, the, the coat with the blood on it, albeit it was animal's blood, Jacob did not know special tests, no DNA tests, nothing out of it. You see, it's just his son's blood. Animal Joseph was a put up a fight, but he's dead. So the coat was used to convince Jacob, don't even look for him. He's dead and he's gone. Potiphar's wife took his coat the next time, his clothing, and said, this is the evidence, and he tried to hold me down. See him evidence, and the evidence from the court convinced Potiphar that Joseph was wrong. Even though he knew I said, well, my money. She was all right. And if you notice, brethren, although she did that, he should have died. He should be on death row. He should have been hanged immediately. Being a slave, messing with the captain's wife. But Potiphar knew who we are over there. So Potiphar put him in jail. God, I regard him all right. Potiphar knew that Joseph wouldn't do that. Joseph knows, Potiphar knew that. Joseph no, no, no really stay like that. And a woman, I mean, watch her. Sometimes when I walk, and she turn back, when she said Joseph, she want one more thing. She go back in the house and so something. No, then I watch her and she don't write. Virgin, some of us put ourselves into some pit because we talk about it all the time. Praise his holy name. Our, our attitudes are so wrong that we, nobody can nobody can give it up like because Joseph, every stage of his life was purposeful. Everything that put him through would help him in the next stage. The love hate of his father helped him in Potiphar's house and to deal with prison. The dreams in his father's house would bless him while he was in prison. The, the, the coat that was stripped from him, he saw, oh God, all those brothers took it and God with it and they didn't know what they did with it. He knew that God would take care of his clothes that he left in Potiphar's wife's arms. So he said, how can I do this wicked thing? And sin against my God. And I'm saying to the saints today, when you're in your pit or you're heading to your prison, you gotta, you got to still have God loving in your heart. Amen. Let the commandments be a constant to you. The pit is a part of the package. I accept and understand that I am still a, a child of God even though I'm going through this. Sweetheart, I'm talking to you. Even though I feel low, I feel disparaged, I feel like there's no hope, still believe that God is still the author of your life. Praise his holy name. And sometimes you're in the pit, Sister Tanjani, you feel like that is when your friend should have been encouraging you. You think that's when mommy or others should be telling you the right things. Most of in your pit, that's when people say the worst things. Anybody experience that what I'm talking about? When you're in your low state, when you feel like God is doing some things, taking you through some processes too. God is processing you for the next stage of your life. That is when people say, how oh, shall she, oh, she play? How oh, shall she do? What am I going with? What does he think? Who do you, who, who you think he is? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just come. Where am I going with? Hello? Mm -hmm. 
But I'm encouraging the saints to when you're when you're in the pit and somebody's throwing dirt on you in there, use it to build yourself. Praise Or somebody bless your name. Come on, a preacher. Praise his holy name. A loving preacher. When my two are dead by and stand still and then and become a tall tree. So can come on. Bless the name of Jesus. And what one man did when the two are dead, he stepped to the side and then he trampled. Bless the name of Jesus. And every time the two are dead, he trampled. And guess what happened? He started to build him with a platform. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And every time the two are dead, he started and trampled. You know, guess what I'm going to I'm not talking about being star preacher. The man just a preacher, the man just stuck. And every time he's a strong it, and he become the new crowd. Yeah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And every time the children of the earth and you just move and, and trample it, it becomes a new crowd. Guess what happened? The pit ain't getting bigger, the pit is getting smaller. And after after the children of the last earth, you don't step on and step off. Because guess what? You have built yourself from the bottom of Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody worship God. If you think that, that God is finished with you, every time the children of the earth, you and use your worship to trample it. Praise his name. And step aboard of that pit. Yes. yes. Don't get comfortable in the pit. No. no. And sometimes God can use Ishmaelite to release him. Come on, come on. Yes. That's the part that Some people are looking for roach. Some people are looking for better clown. Yeah. Some people are looking for better to release him. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that sometimes an Ishmaelite God use. Come on, preacher. Eden. So Eden. <laughs> come on. Some midnights. <laughs> praise him. Some people, some people they, they're close but they fall. Come on, preach. Got Ishmael in the right here. We don't get one more preacher. But he used to be hatred already. Because his own hated him. So God prepared him to deal with Ishmaelite. Why don't I open the swamp? Oh, bless, bless the name of Jesus. Because Ishmaelite already run away from Abraham. Praise his holy name. He already saw in his mind. Your birthright was stolen. You're the firstborn of Abraham, and you you got nothing. This Isaac has gotten everything. And here come the Israelites. See, Isaac seen in a pit, being sold. Oh yes, we're gonna we're gonna sell you. Oh yes, we're gonna buy you. Cause you're nothing but a slave. But it's a part of the package. It's a part of the package. So Joseph could deal with the Ishmaelite because he could deal with Reuben and God and he could deal with, with uh, Isaacar and, and Asher yes. and Zebulun. He could deal with the Ishmaelites because he felt the pain yes. of dealing with his own blood. Yes. Brethren, when you're in the house of God and something going against you, you hey, 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 shouldn't have been in church, but God is preparing you to deal with the Ishmaelites. When I got to work on it, you don't say, hey, I got in a church and this is not nothing. Come on, people that I walked together in the house with that I sang together with, they, they told me that I was nothing. Come on. So when you tell me that I'm nothing, I've been there, done that. Exactly You're right. nothing, is an Israelite nothing. I've been there, because Ruben didn't tell, tell me I'm nothing. Judah tell me I'm already in a rhythm. So what you tell me, don't, don't even move me. Absalom, I run with oh, bless the name of Jesus. So what you're doing, don't even move. Throw your nerve. I'm gonna sign to the step. I'm gonna step on it. Amen. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna fuse what you're doing to me to fuel me to get me to the next level in God. Oh, so the bad man, so I'm wicked. Oh, I'm gonna fast and pray a little more. So God will have more mercy on me. Bless the name of. I wish the church will have the attitude to build themselves in God. And when you when you're being despised, you're torn down instead of woe in me and woe is me and, and leave the church and God about your business. You will really walk in the garden of your adversity and let those tears water. Amen. And, you, and step closer to God because God have a plan for you. Joseph's life was for purposeful learning. Amen. Joseph's life was for purposeful learning. Every stage he went through, God used it again. I can't tell you how many things I went through as a child. But it was purposeful learning. It's your mindset. You got to teach your children to. 
Vanjit, our kids may be a little bit more comfort, comfortable than we were when we were growing up. We got to seek opportunities to teach them yes. some teachable things. We got to seize the teachable moments. I know that are up sometime. I remembered, I remembered, um, um, Bridget, when I see my neighbors every Sunday, no matter how poor they be, it's rice and peas and chicken. Come on, Bridget. Come on, Bridget. Come on, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> I see that show's a to get rice and peas and chicken. Yes, sir. Bridget, sometimes when I get soup, cabbage and rice. Yes, sir, what, what, what is that you have here? Preacher man, like, mommy, what, what, what are you doing? Oh, why did he then? Why did he then rage and we don't rage? What's going on? Why is it that the devil just goof and we are just tip? What's going on with this? When you look looking at the fridge, we three, four chicken. I was still like a colonel and dumpling. What's going on on this Sunday? Teach every moment. Teach every moment. Preacher, right now, this is the gambling. Shit, there's not a food to put on the table. I said, we don't eat that. We don't want to. No, sir, man. It has to be decided. You know what? We, we've been through that. Being true, turning handmade fashion. So when if it's not if it's not the state, I will take the some some an egg and 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 fritters and I'm good. I will take the grilled and the rice and I'm totally good. You will never know because I was raised to accept and 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 take what was prepared and honor it and respect and bless it. When I when I pray for it, I pray to my when we eat the bread. That was swear up in our day, I will feel good. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Praise his holy name. Yeah. But I'm saying to the church of the living God, but you're gonna teach our kids the mindset of being of, of receiving purposeful learning. Yeah. 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 And to know what parents will tell them no. Everything yes. Everything yes. Everything yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Everything I yes. Develops or no. See the world, the world church get quiet. Why are they going to have school now? Yeah, man. Sister Campbell, I'm telling you, they, they will never, they're not experiencing some of the challenges we did when we were children. That I have them one room. Maybe I have one room, I go, which one room? I want two? One room. Let's get the bank open one of them, let's go open them, let's go open them, let's go open all of them, let's go open them, let's see. Because my father was a dad, you Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm looking at is just open them, just open them, open all of them. You know why no door do it like that? I was saying no door like that. Preacher, the man put curtain for a fruit preacher, curtain. Because my father let two parents in and just come in and say, what are going in there? What are going in there? No, 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 no. We're just, we're just, we're just nervous. God have mercy. Preacher, I don't know, I don't know. And today we're telling my children, oh yes. And what Brother Jamal says will become a prophetic word. Amen. When they hear no for the first time, we flip out. Yes. What? Yeah. Brother, I remember the first time I got a zero. And I test. I lost it. LOSD, lost it. Preacher, imagine from, from elementary to middle to, to um, we call it high school. You never get a zero. Never, I never let them fail. Let them, let them never, I never see a failing grade. Yeah. And when I go to this school, I get an essay. And, and so, and when I write the two essays, the lady gave me zero for each. Zero. It means that she will pick out sent out and no way around. You're an idiot. <laughs> Bridget, I was so. Bridget, me, me going, bad. B A D, bad. <laughs> Bridget, it was rough, but I wrote. But I'm telling the teacher, say, man, you, you're not them supposed to be teaching on this college. So you could read somebody else and give them zero. You are zero. <laughs> she was crying. I walked out of the class. She wouldn't come back because I tell her she's zero. <laughs> but I tell her I've never seen it before. So I flipped out. Well, this means that like good to me. Because after that, I realized that I was the zero. Yeah, but you never used to zero, so you have to jump on it. Yeah. Sister Julian, tell them some no. Tell them some no. Yeah. N O no. Yeah. Tell them some 21 year old no. Yeah. 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 Some 20 year old no. Yeah. Sister Julian, I'm giving her life back here. She said, Thank you, Pastor. Preach, teach. Virgin, tell them some no. 
just to prepare them for some no's. Because you're going to hear some no. God have mercy. So what I'm saying to you, some of our children are only used to, I'm, I'll think about it, I mean, we get them used to, not today, no, uh-uh. Hey, no, I, 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 I don't want to say the other one. No. You cook, you cook, you cook a nice dinner for them. I don't want it. No problem. You see, next morning, preacher, they give them for breakfast. I don't want it. The next when they come for lunch, mommy, I'm hungry. They give them for lunch. I don't want it still. Give them for dinner again. I want to spoil our baggage. They give them for the next breakfast. I bet they eat it. I bet they get there. The... Mommy tastes different, but it's good. What? Learn. Put it back. Put it in. Put it in the fridge. I don't even got to tell you. You got to learn. We, we, we need more choices in that church. We have more when they turn 18, 19, 20, then God of God. We should never teach them of the whole land to God. Come on. 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 But, but you're still God, God. You're there? No. No, no, no. No, no. And you have to get up off your knees and still call him God. Some of we are scared of our children. We don't want them to not like us. Joseph get the hatred and love. A balance of duality that he had to live with. So. I didn't say all that. I didn't say all that. I'm not telling anybody to abuse their children. I'm saying to call them together and tell them, when I say no, I mean no. Amen. Sometimes they're in our own situation. We saw like a kill this boy. They can say no. Call them used when you tell them no. And they reach it. They can say no. Not so. But you preach or something, look up and say, so when a man says no, he means no. So that's what a girl should say. I said, well, I, well, I'm but I'm a man. And I say, I say, no. It's bad it's for Christ. And Christ alone. I will provide me with. See, everybody here, so it's for them. So me said, no. So we are me maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe I'll think about it. Think about what? You got it, got it. My open sure. I'm not sure. Purposeful learning. I love this part of the lesson because a lot of people don't understand that when you're in the pit, you're supposed to learn something from it. Every challenge you go to, what are you learning? I want you to think now, to be reflective. Don't listen to the show. Listen to the words I'm saying now. I've been through some things. What did I learn? What have I learned? Some of the challenges, the rough times you've been in. What have you learned from it? Be it financial, be it emotional, be it in, in intimacy, be whatever facet of your life. What have you learned from it? A broken relationship, whatever it is. What have you learned from it? We will not become a strong people until we are reflective. Okay, yesterday is gone. Vanja, I was, I was commenting something you said in the prayer that you thank God for your now. See, that's when you start to grow, when you can thank God for today. When you can respect what you're going to know. And I'm saying that for purposeful learning to happen, you have to be reflective. So your business didn't work out. Thank you, Lord. At least I'm learning. I've learned, I learned my lesson. And you know, I say, well, a bit of lesson. I learned my lesson. What lesson have you learned? I'm learning that. When I'm going into something, I'm going to do better research. I'm learning that when I'm going to do something, um, I'm going to talk to you, Lord. I'm going to wait on you. Amen. I, I, I learned that, okay, um, Richard, some of us are so wicked, you know. You can't go in and say, Lord, you know, my marriage is a mistake. But no, that, you know, you don't, no, don't do that. <laughs> Where you put your learning? That's how I'm teaching today. I'm talking about other things. Well, it, well, it, <laughs> <laughs> 
The sister Rina wasn't the best choice for I'm gonna work with it, Lord. You can't pray that next year. You have to kill her with that. There's some wicked people who listen to this list. I'm gonna go pray about the Lord. You know, my wife wasn't my choice. But wicked! Like you're not, I'm clearing it up so you don't go away with, with misunderstanding. I'm talking about um, your, your choices, the things that you have done, the things that you follow, the things that God bring you into. You're going to look into it and say, God, what am I learning from this? Or am I going to grow from this? What am I going to build from this? Especially our young people, middle aged, everybody, but especially the young. This is a learning ground for you, man. Sister, Sister Randa, you, 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 are, you are right in the school of wisdom. Some of you graduate from school of wisdom. Some of you graduate preacher, we know everything. We know everything. Yes, the truth behind you know the people are graduating. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The truth, we have graduated from the school of wisdom. How? Preacher, I am still learning. I am still learning. Bless the name of the Lord. I am still learning. Every single day. So even in this week, I can't say how many times I said I learned something new. Mm. Never think about it that way. I learned something new. I learned something new. I said it almost every week. Now I learned. Jivan showed me something. I said, I never knew that. I said, now I learned something. From me? Yeah, I learned something from you. Because I want to know that you can learn something from me. I didn't think they know anything. But a Jamal, but a Jamario. You're in learning ground. You're on learning ground. You're going to go through some things. Be reflective. Sister Anne, be reflective. What is that teaching you? So my bills are due and I can't pay them. What is God teaching me? What do you think? My child has my child, my child has back talk me. What am I learning? Do something different. My child just tell me, um, we, we are talking. Man, leave me alone. I'm going to slam the door. I got it. What are you learning? What are you learning? Your husband just yelled at you. You feel small. What are you learning? What did you just learn? Everybody, I hope you're thinking. Yes. Praise yes. is all the name. I, I applied for a promotion and I didn't get it. What is that teaching? Praise is all the name. Somebody testified here that they got a promotion and they didn't take it. And, 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 and look a bit after that, guess what happened? A position was eliminated from the company. So sometimes it's not everything that did there is go. God said, wait, for your back, son. You're gonna be saying I'm going I got to that 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 spot is gonna die. Yes. I'm, I'm keeping you in the pit right now. I have a bigger plan for you. You're gonna run this company. Not a supervisor, you're gonna run it, but you gotta wait. Amen. 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 Bex and and I'll step off. Anyway, so it, what I'm saying to us is that we have got, we have got to um, learn a purpose for learning. Be intent about what you learn from each thing that you go through. It means at the end of each day, this is the phrase you said to yourself, what did I learn today from God? What was good? What was not so good? How am I going to grow from this thing that happened to me today? How am I, how am I, how am I going to come up? Because what I went through is a part of the package. Everybody got that? Amen. What assurance are, but I, I want to take question three. Um, that is Brother White. It's Romans 8. Question 8. Ro, ro, question 3. Romans 8, 35 to 37. What assurance do we have that trying circumstances in life will never place us outside of God's love? Romans 8, 35 to 37. Brother, Brother Arden, Romans 8, 35 to 37. Who shall separate us from the of Christ? Shall tribulation, our discourse, our persecution, our fight, our nakedness, our curse, our sword? 
How do you get out? How do you get out of a pit that wasn't designed for you? How do you get out of that? But the Jamal says, but the Jamal says, call on Jesus. Anybody else? But I will look like there's something going to your mind. What do you think, but I will? How do you get out of a pit that you dig for yourself? That's what they said, right? Prison. How do you get out of a pit you dig for yourself? You're a pen. Stop your hand, child. What's the end for? You can have him taking anything. Stop your pen. Preacher, I don't have any steel problems. Nobody know I repent. You still want the God's will? You have to repent. You have to say, God, I'm sorry. I come to have to tell the fellow people I'm sorry. I still want the line. One word. Repent. And Jesus said to them, Are you in likewise perish? The man said, Don't take the tower, Shiloh. Because you don't want to pick them. They don't want to pick them. They don't want to pick them. They don't want to pick them. 18 at the tower, Shiloh, fella. You're not better than them unless you repent. So preach, I love your one word answer. Repent. Repent. Let me let speak away now. Maybe it's two words we'll, we'll crawl it. Put the ice on the cake. Yes. Now two words, Nika. More, more than two. Okay, let's see. Shall I pray? Yes, yes, yes. Repent. Repent. I love it. As we all know, Joseph, no, Jacob and Esau. Yeah. We know, we know that Jody, <laughs> Jacob, uh -huh. he dig a pit. Yes. Yeah. When he when he took his brother, yes. And as that man tell him to sell him his birthright. Yes, yes, yes. And as that man, but then the long run, I love it. You understand? I love it. He reconciled. He reconciled back to his brother now. Yes. Three years in. You understand me? The man realized that probably he could take his family yes. life. Yes, come on, come on. So the man said one set for us. I said, why? And this set do it. And the man do it. And said, let me have one next set. Let me have it. Come on. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I love it. So brethren, sometimes we take. Yeah, we, yeah, we give up sometimes. You understand? Know yeah, we give up something sometimes, brethren. Because the man said, you know, what would I do? But you want to make peace? I <laughs> So as I put it out to say, Virgin, we have to see ourselves. True. Amen. Because if you don't see yourself, you can't repent. No, 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 you can't. You have to see yourself. Yes, man. And as I said, Jacob, see himself. I realize that this is not right. No. Because they grew away from my brother. You know what I'm saying? I do it in their one side, I mean the one side, but still. And so some people say, boy, me let them run him, so boy, everything all right. Me not have to deal with it. Mm. The man was trouble. Yes, sir. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And the man seek out peace. Yes. Have a life conscience, he So, brethren, mm -hmm. we have to seek out peace. I love and we say, sometimes we bring war. We bring some die, probably say something and it hurts somebody. But are you alright with it? Jacob didn't alright. He will seek out peace. Shall so we praise, praise the Lord? Him. Praise him. Amen. Praise him. Amen. Praise him. Praise praise him. Praise praise him. Praise was it 400 men that Esau arrived with preaching? Huh? Was it 400 that Esau arrived with? Um, he, 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 he do, um, I don't remember. Praise the Lord, say. Amen. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But Isa, mm -hmm. you see, from Jacob left preacher, Isa was building an army just to deal with him. He was riding with hundreds. I know, I know, now, man, he was going to wipe him up. Yes. And the man of the hatred that is each year, the hatred is building. Imagine Jacob was away for 20 years. I have built, you have built something for 20 years. 20 years, just for the one event. And God opened his heart to receive 
Jacob. And so Brother Arvin says you should repent, you can say you should reconcile. Persons were wondering, when you dig a pit that was not uh, ordained by the Lord or it's whatever, um, you have to find ground to repent. You have to find ways to reconcile with those who have hurt in doing it. Because sometimes, as I said, the pit you're digging is happening by yourself. I just go and make a job in it. But you didn't dig two, the Bible says you, you dig one, and you yourself are falling. So I dig a pit for Sister Rita to fall, and I'm now in that pit. Repent. Yes, PJ, you're right. A 400. Um, 33, 33, verse 1. 33, verse 1. Yeah. Three times we can write that thing I didn't even see. <laughs> Jacob lifted up his hands and looked, and behold, Esau came and written for it. I just, yeah, I read Genesis 33, yeah. 33, yes. So he had 400 people with him. Esau. 400. But you do you understand that Abraham lost 300 that was raised in his own house to rescue that? Yes. Yeah. Esau was coming with 400 to wipe out Jacob. And uh, Jacob was well, his 12 three. sons and his daughter and his four wives. Yeah. And maybe a few little helper with them and support and so on. So Jacob was having the army for the fame 400 men. And a right, here's what I'm saying. A right, I'm a right, I'm a right, I'm coming up with you. A grace, man. So what I'm saying, I love the two answers, two words you put in them in. Repent and reconcile. You've hurt somebody. When you go into those things, you've hurt somebody. Bridget, even, um, oh my God. You notice, you notice that Joseph, Joseph, when he became prime minister, he didn't go back after Come on. And he put them back and those who have left behind oh, in, that, in a journey, don't try to go back and do revenge. When they are promoted. When they are promoted. Let yeah. God do the work. Bless the name of the Lord. Lord. And people wonder why he yeah. didn't do it. Go back and read second Chronicles 25, the rest side. That's the first verse. Right. That verse 2 only. But the rest of it you can see. When you get to the point now, now you're standing at the podium. Don't use it as a as a as a as a podium of revenge. Praise him. We never read where Brother Joseph said you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. He didn't go back and say send for Potiphar and his wife. God no Potiphar, I honor him now. Potiphar wife no. When they, when they come, everybody in the bow look. We're going to review the evidence. We're going to retry the case. What the first wife you are guilty of, of abusing me. And no, you shall be in prison for, for, for 10 years. No. No, Joseph knew that if that woman didn't put him in prison, he wouldn't be in the bottle. Bless the name of Jesus. It was a network that God already designed. And if you fail in the first part, you're not going to get to the next part. I would be that that's how he feels that he's a stone. He's a stepping stone. God had to put him in prison to learn. And so Patifa wife was the conduit, the, 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 the step that God used. And Joseph got it. And Joseph walked in it, and when he became prime minister, he never said, Come back, Patifa, I want to talk to you. Yes. But you still don't go for this, Patifa. Yes. So you put the voice, still don't go for this. So every journey is a. Is a is What's a my name? Joseph. No. What's my name? Miss Joseph. Prime Minister Joseph. And, and carry on and abuse the woman. No? He left her alone. Exactly. Bridget, we need to learn. Amen. Some of our parents didn't treat us well. Amen. 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 Know that God promotes us. Yes. Oh, yeah. Know we have our own things like yes. so. Yes. Are you going to dishonor them? No. Oh, Amen. 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 Will you step out of the curse and step into the blessing? Amen. Wow. Reconcile. Amen. Repent. Amen. Never, know better. never treat me well. You, you call me all kind of name. You, you tell me I will become nothing. Amen. But today God has blessed me and I'm going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Today I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to fast and fast with me. Because if you step in my, if you step with me into this victory, God will bring us both into his kingdom. Can we learn and grow together? Some of us hold on to the past too long. Bless the name of Jesus. You gotta learn from Joseph. Joseph stepped out of all the past, all the hate.
and his brothers came. Mighty God, he fed them. Yes. Understand, sir, we love and when he, when, he, when he watched them, he had to call Benjamin because it was his real blood Amen. with his mother and father. Yes. He called Benjamin and gave a little bit of a bigger mess. Mess meaning food. Yeah. Just bless him up. Yeah. And his brothers eat and bench. And he does went to the Bible said Joseph had to go into the bathroom. And does Hannah. Yeah. And someone with a very said, Kill him boy, kill him boy, kill him, kill him, kill him. Get over for do, get over for do, get to go. God protects them now. But Joseph was crying because his love, he missed them. He thought about them. He dreamed of the moment that he would meet them. And he crossed the bridge in his mind that I would forgive them. And now he saw them, he stepped into his forgiveness. Are you ready to step into your new life? Are you ready to grow in God? Are you ready to forgive and to reconcile? Repent, reconcile. And you could repent all you want without reconciliation, it almost don't even make sense. Repent and reconcile. We can get the smoke because guess what? You brought the icing on the cake. You must repent. You must say, God, I've made a mistake. And then you must reconcile. Praise the soul in the name. Praise the soul in the name. Some of us are arrogant and full of ourselves. Overestimate who we are in front of God. Be small and low in front of God. Bend low in front of God. Kneel on your knees and talk to God. Say, God, I'm nothing. I'm a worm, flesh, dust. But you are God and you are eternal. And I'm sorry, God. Hallelujah. I've sinned against you, God. Hallelujah. Repent and reconcile. Many of we don't pray, so we so we someone put on parachute, preach and jump. Yes. <laughs> I'm free fall. Still fall. Praise his holy name. Someone will pick us on love and fall less on love pit. Some of we fall less on love pit. Some infatuation pits. Praise him. I know you're going through the emotional hurt and pain. Guess what happened? It's time for you to elevate yourself through repentance and through reconciliation. Say, God, I'm sorry. And those who have hurt say, I am sorry. The words I said weren't real. I pulled your emotion to this part and I've done this here and that here. It's unfair and unjust and I'm sorry. I hurt you and I'm sorry. Yeah. Praise his holy name. Praise the soul we have belittled as ministers, some of us have to call some of them and tell them we're sorry. Amen. 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 Ministers, I'm talking to you all over Zion, all over the world. If you hear this, tell somebody, brethren, sorry. Because you trampled them. Amen. When you should be nurturing, you have trampled. Yes, when you should have blessed, you have cursed. When you should have uplifted, you don't trap them. You spoke when you should have been silent. Today, we must repent and reconcile. Praise God. Because the pit is integrated into your package. So, and that was a great question from the light. Brother Riley. Um, so the person has a, a follow up question. They say, How do you let go of the past? Then, how do you let go of the past? I would say, When you understand the purpose, yes. when you've got the purpose to learn it, when you've got the lesson from your past, you will let it go. You get it? So for example, for example, I remember preacher, I remember, I told you so many times. I remember going um, as a young teenager, going into college, Sister Rana. And I received a scholarship. But the scholarship was the scholarship was taken back. Right at the cost of me going into college, the scholarship was taken back. The government took it. 
and gave it to someone else. Someone else that was in my very, the very assembly that I worshipped in. How do you reconcile that? How do you, how do you deal with that? You know what I did? I said, I'm not even going back there. I said, I'm not going to do You want me, said, I would never do that. I'm going to go to a different assembly. And, and my mother said, you I must be mine. Come on. Are you going to go up and to walk by hatred? Come on. Or you're gonna go to you're gonna go oh you're gonna go to revenge on your hatred? No, you have to forgive. Come on, right there, man. And brethren, she talked to me till we cry and she prayed for me and this that was it. She said you gotta to forgive today and me too. Yeah, Come yeah. on. Are you gonna go back to church and love? Cause I'm not giving up my friends yeah, for your hatred. Yeah, and she said nevertheless I will I will um I will help you. Sister Rhonda, guess what happened? I, I had saved enough, and with the parents' help, I was able to go through the first two years. Till book church dry up. And I was reading that song, and that's when Elijah, 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 the prophet, Elijah, prophesied, no rain, I'm a father, and then the brook dry up. The money dry up. And it was at the last year of college that. The government came back and says, oh, everything is set now. Do you, do you want to take it up now? This scholarship, do you want to get it now? Come on, sir. And I said, oh, yeah. And that last year of college, Sister Rhonda, I was able to save the money. Because by the time the scholarship came, I already paid for what I did. God would have it that the boarding was free. Come on. And everything was free, like based on different things. And by the time that money came, I didn't have to touch it. Come on. The only thing I paid was tithe and help people. You know what, what I could do Come on, in the middle of my last year of college? I called the girl I've been talking to. Come on, Come on, I called her mother and I said, what is her ring size? Yes, Bless the name of Jesus. Preacher, right now, the money was coming in now, preacher. When I needed it most yeah. to make a move in my life. You see, when he get it from him, I couldn't make that move. Come on, Amen. So they thought it for evil, but God meant it for good. Really? And when she came on a visit, I said, Will you marry me? She said, Yes. Yes, sir. Y'all miss it. Really? You miss it. Yeah. Richard, here I am today. Praise is over there. 20 years later. Really? Next week will be 20 years. <laughs> but God tried God to the court. Really? Somebody had to coach me into forgiving, coach me into letting go. Coaching me to understand that they probably don't even know what they do, but they set you up for success. Amen, amen, amen. In the moment, it felt hard. Yes. It felt wrong. Yes. It felt disappointing. Amen. But in the end, it was a blessing. And I'm saying, how you let go of the past amen. is to understand the lesson that God wanted to learn from the past. Yes, and when you get it, Reggie, it's like the, it's, anybody go to school with bio, like biology, you know? Yes. Let's get into the digestive yes. process. Yes. When you, when you first bite the food, your teeth, it, it starts with the teeth. Your canines rip the food, your molars chew them. Yes. Your, your, your saliva masticate yeah. or we call it soften the food. Yeah. It goes through your esophagus down into your, where you chew it, I guess. Yeah. And it goes into your, your stomach is a yeah. yes. It goes into your stomach, a stomach yeah. bone. Yeah, stomach. I guess you from yeah. the stomach. Yeah. And the acid in it further breaks down yeah. the food. Yeah. And then it goes. It sends, of course, your, your body's processing it. It goes to the which one? Small or large? Small, Small intestine. It goes to another process there. Then it goes to the? Large, large intestine. And then guess what happened? When your body's done with that food, guess what happened? You feel a move in your belly. Bless the name of Jesus. And you go to the bathroom. And you release it. And you flush it. I'm saying the past, how you going to go off the past? Let the process that God wanted to go through happen. And then you're going to flush it. Release it. Release it. We don't want it. We're not going to recycle it no more. We're going to release it. Confess and release. Some of us need to get brook rats. Because we, 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 our body have, have stuck and held on. Constipated with the past. But I give you the brook rats of righteousness. I give you the... the some, I don't really relax it. I give you the relaxity. 
I will give you the laxity to release the past. Magnesium, so that is something. What? Oh, God, I think I need to turn around. Some seraphim. Some real dandelion. Spiritual dandelion. Sister Dandelion, if you want to release the past, you're going to learn the lessons from it. I said, God, thank you. And let your, let your spiritual intestine process it and then make it come out, make it, let it pass through your body and God detox. bless the name of the Lord. Detox. detox. We need some detox. Anybody willing to detox today? The man said, purge me with this of the teaching that I shall be clean. Wash me! And I shall be whiter than snow. It's time for the purging to happen. You've got to start by looking at what lessons have I learned. Okay, so my, my past was rough. And yeah, it was tough. Yeah. And you didn't say I love you. But guess what happened? I thank you for it. Because you know what? You have toughened me up for the reality that I'm facing now. In Georgia, in America, in Jamaica, in, 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 in Spanish Town, in, in wherever I am right now. The toughness I'm facing. It was how tough you grew me that made me tough. You, you, have, you, have, you have got my brain acclimatized to challenge it. And so I thank you for it. That's what the man said. Repent. Reconcile. To the priest. And move. Come on, man. I love Sister Annie saying. Keep it moving. You keep it moving. Yes. That's, that's, that's why the Bible says, you like, you're like a dog to his vomit. After that, clean you up and you let go the past. Every time you take back it, you die back back in the mud. The guy on the back stroke. You like it. Now we have a butterfly in the mud. It's time to start. Bless the name of the Lord. Some of you have too much stomach. Come on, no preacher. The cow has four stomachs. I call the ruminants. And what I'm saying is that after they eat one day, they bring it up in the evening and chew it again. And then they start it again. And that's what we do. Every four years we bring it up. Start chew it again. It's a disgrace. I'm saying to the church, the pit is a part of the package. If we will have less malice and bad mindism in the church, if we accept the past, accept that God brought me through something, or I put myself through something, or whatever it was, but I'm going to repent and reconcile, clean up and move forward, and I'm not going back to it anymore. I'm done. So Pastor, you remember when time she did I'm, I'm done. I am blessed and I'm sanctified. I'm saying right now. I'm not worried about the past. Amen. You are you are an open sepulchre. You are a garbage canvas. You're trying to bring up, bring me back into this, and I'm not going into that. I rebuke you. Satan is trying to speak to you. Don't let them be, don't let them use you as a conduit to come to me. And I'm cutting over the past. I'm not living that life anymore. You're right. The first word you said was the best one, sister. See, that was happened to Daniel, but I'm sister now. Oh, somebody worship God. What you said, you said it to uh, Julie, but I am sister Julie. What you said, you said it to Anne, but this is sister Anne. God has washed me and changed me and given me a different name, a different part, of course. I'm done with that. Can somebody praise God? Yes. But really, whoever, anybody who said it on the line, tell them I just said thank you. Um, those are great questions. Can I say to the church, those online and those here, to, um, I think there's so much to learn. We could have ended the lesson here. There's much to learn from Joseph. After Joseph did all of that, and he got to the throne, he did not act all kingly. Mm -hmm. He did not go up there and start to exercise the revenge on all the people that tore him down. Because he realized that in trying to tear him down, they were tearing off the things that he didn't need. Amen. And the things that God wanted him to shine was built where they were being built. Where they think they were tearing down, they were actually building up to receive where you now is. Amen. Sister Randa, if you ever wonder why are you so industrious, yes. what is driving you? Yes. It's the negative, it's the things that it's the things that you think you couldn't get over. Now they have become the, the platforms for your yes. success. You're propelled. You're propelled to fly. And I tell you, I'm telling you this is one girl that's not lazy. Amen. 
Not a lazy person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. To push herself. Come on yes. now. And guess what happened? Guess what I'm trying? I'm trying to explain to you. If sometimes we get, we have some people raising some sheltered lives. Yes. And once adversity hit them, yes. they look, look at them. Those Kennedy, they look at granddaughter. These people are wealthy. They can't afford for the rest of their life. Twenty-two. I just kill herself. Yes. What happened? I will tell her something. 22? Yeah. That's Sister Rhonda. Sister Rhonda, that's younger than you. That's right here at your age. Right. But you have a hope. Come on now. I don't have. There's a lie. See you later today. Bless the name of Jesus. Yeah. And so God is awesome. Man. Yes. Great questions out there. Um, anybody ready for four? Yes. Javan? Okay, so we have, we have some we have some ones online. After such experiences, what is recorded about the next chapter? Um, Praise the Lord. Raise it. Um, and it says, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my folks this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of Gar's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, and and I, he, we dreamed, we talked, each man, sorry, according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there, and there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew servant, the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted it to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream, he did interpret. And I did it as he interpreted to us, so it was he, he restored unto my office, that when him he came. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him to hasten out of the dump. Dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have been the dream, that, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to un interpret it. 16, and it says, and Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Where is him? 25. Verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. 27 to 46. Keep going. And the seventh day, a little paper came that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty years blessed with the east, when shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he should unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known to the land by reason of the famine, but following for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing which was satisfied, and God will surely bring it to pass. Now therefore, therefore let Pharaoh look. Out a man is screen and why the setting over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven twentieth years. And let them gather all the food of those three years that come, and lay up corn on their death and above, and let them eat food in their cities. And that food shall be for the store to the land of Egypt. The seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all the servants. And Pharaoh said unto the servants, Can we find such a one as this man? 
is a man in whom the spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has sued thee, all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne I will I be here to them thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee all over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and it put upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in the vestures of fine line, and put a gold chain upon his neck. And he made them to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him about the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, Zach, Zach, and he gave him, Zach, and he gave him to wife Ashna, the daughter of Father for his priest of Amon. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30, 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through out all the land of Egypt. <laughs> After such experiences, what is recorded about the next chapter of Joseph's life? Brother well, James, give me a word. What do you think? Or, or, or what is recorded about the next chapter of Joseph's life? After the pit and the prison, what happened next? He was successful. He became king over Egypt. <laughs> yes, Peter. He, was, he said he was second in command of Egypt. Brother yeah. bless the Lord, man. Yeah, Special praise in Mama Dre. Anybody see the blessing here? Yes. Yes. Anybody see what God can do? Anybody see that God promotion comes from God? Yes. This is only name. So Junior, I wrote back at some pictures this week. My brother in law was showing me some of their youth, and I went back and I look at some pictures of my youth. Very few of them will have on any shoes. Mm -hmm. My mother was telling me, of, she said, when you were young, you came to me and said, Mom, I, 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 you know what, I really want a jacket suit. I never wear one of those things. And my mom knew they didn't have it to buy no jacket suit. And she said, God will provide. Yes, sir. She said, the very same week, somebody traveled to Jamaica and gave her a package. And in it, they gave every, all the children something. And the one thing that came for me was a suit. A jacket suit. And she said, God is a provider. But we have to wait on him. But did you listen to what Joseph went through? The very first verse told you what the brothers just said, what Deacon and Brother Harvey just said. The first thing that came out of the butler's mouth, he said, today I see my faults. The man said, mighty God, I have sinned. I remember. We dismember the man. When Pharaoh did their struggle, because nobody could interpret you that I'd lock it off from them. Like when you do with Nebuchadnezzar later on, that lock it off. And the, the, the book says, today, what is, was his word? He said, verse 9. I do remember my faults this day. Then if you are, you sent us to prison because you didn't mind at me and the, the baby. I remember when we were down there, we tell a young Hebrew we dream, we dream the same night. And everything the youth say happened. I was a steward to you and the youth that hung. Praise the moment. Amen. And Bridget, do you recognize that when Joseph was about to go to Pharaoh, do you know what the Bible said happened? And this is something I want us to, to get the juice from. Joseph was going to meet Pharaoh. He prepared himself to meet Pharaoh. Yes, man. The man cleaned up. God have mercy. The Bible said he shaved and changing clothes. And some of we brethren, we want God to promote us. We 
hard to step into the next stage. But guess what we're doing? We're not dressing for right. We're not dressed for the next stage. Joseph dressed to be a prime minister. He didn't dress like I'm a prisoner. He didn't go in his orange suit. I'm just making that up. I didn't have an orange suit back then. It was a past a month. What I'm saying, he took off his prison clothes and put on his next level clothes. Praise his holy name. Are you ready to put on your next level clothes? The garment of righteousness. Praise his holy name. Your speech different. Your look different. Praise his holy name. Sister Tanjana, you dress like a woman of God. You will attract the right type of attraction. When you get to me, I say, dress for your next level. Praise is all in here. Praise look how you look elegant this morning. And we got that I look royal this morning. Yeah. Anybody see three John? You look like you're about, you look like you're about to, to meet Queen Victoria. Yeah. Anybody get what I'm saying? Praise Dress for success. Yes. Bless the name of the Lord. But you remember I went, I went for an interview. I couldn't get no work. I, I, I just came to the States and I could not find a work. And preacher, remember when you I learned that when you go into interview, you wear a jacket, your tie, you will fix up yourself and you go. Yeah. I got this interview, I was excited. I drove down there, I had my suit and my tie, my, my, my little tie pin, and I was smell good, look good, dress good. And I sat down waiting. And there were two other gentlemen in there, they were in shorts and polo shirts and slippers. And I said, them not get the walk today. I want to get this work. Because I'm just for success. Praise him. Praise him. After about 40 minutes, after the time when the interview should start, I started to get nervous. I'm wondering what is going on. Why do people, this is a, this is a waste. How can I jump this way? You're 40 minutes late. You know what happened? One of the guys come over to me and says, So why are you here today? I said, I'm here for an interview. I said, Oh my gosh. I said, What happened? So where was I going to interview you? Were well, you just really thought you were one of our boss, like you know, undercover boss or something? Like you just yeah. we don't know who you were. Who the why is this guy just said that to come here? So this job is not for you. You oh, this job is not for you. You don't look like you. This job this job is not for you. I'm like oh you know this job is not for me. That's all you just brought. This job is not for you. Said <laughs> so then look at this thing. You see overqualified. This is not for you. That's all you just. This is the wrong place for that. This is not for you. I went away sorrowful. Mm. I walk in on the camera and said, God, look, I thought that just for success. <laughs> when I went into this job, it was for the wrong. I was so wrong. Everything was wrong about it. You know what I'm saying, preacher? They wanted some down to earth people, some people that's all wrong with touch with them. They said, You don't like you look like you want some no, this is not true. And they wouldn't even do that. That's all they said and I left. My next job, I did better research. I look at pictures, I drove by, I stop the place, look a bit, see how the people dress. So when I went to my next job, I wore a polo shirt and a khaki pants. Awesome. You know why? Because that was what all the workers I saw them wear. Yeah. And I explained to them why I was dressed like that. And you know what? In the middle of the interview, they asked me to go sit with the children I was going to be the teacher. Again. Yeah, I was dressed for success that time. <laughs> You got what I'm saying. I'm using that as a metaphor to tell you that you got to prepare for your next chapter. Yeah. The dressing does have to be your physical dressing, yes. but your mind. How do you dress your mind to get to the next level? Amen. Deacon went to a job and they were giving him the run around. The man was that the other place. <laughs> That's the best. I'm one of the best testimony I've ever heard. Amen. Deacon just start to do what Deacon does. Work without being asked. And they say, what kind of money of man is this? <laughs> now don't get the work, but it's still working. We want a man like this. He's an initiative. He's our supervisor. Amen. I'm saying for the saints of God, set up your mind for the next level. Joseph coming out of prison knew who he was going to face. So he cleaned up. The Bible says, shield. Change him prison clothes. He clean up because he was going to meet Pharaoh. When Pharaoh, and then when Joseph was given the, the answer, Joseph said, you need to find a man that's discreet, that's, that's this. Joseph said, you need a man like me. We don't say you need a man like me. 
You miss it. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm Pharaoh, I am the best option you have. No, you would get you would have lost it. Yeah. But he said, You need a man that's discreet, a man that can run this business. Because you have thought the right person, you have thought we can steer the course. Well, in the seven years, I don't know why you out. Yeah. Why you mean like drink you out and you want somebody who will stay the course. And Pharaoh said, Who else could we choose? But a man that's filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God should shine through you. Amen. Somebody should hear your voice and know there's something special I'm going with you. Amen. So, Brother Ryan, you cannot, want, you cannot whine like everybody else. School year was supposed to start. And we have all these meetings every time we meet. And I have this one concern. How are we going to just, everybody just come back and just do everything. Like nothing is going on. We live in this bit. This thing is happening. What about the kids who are going to take this home to their grandmother? What about the kids who live with their grandparents or a parent with a, with, 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 with a whatever? Yes, the kids may not die and they may have smiled whatever, but what happened when that one grandmother dies? Oh, it's okay. It's not okay with me. I know they're changing. Monday would have been a rough day for me. Because I was saying I was going to stand up. But if brother just stand up and say it's not going to happen. But before I could embarrass myself Come on. or the church Come on. or my family, God make it weird. Yeah. I didn't have to say nothing. Praise One him. prayer. Praise him. Come on, sir. Sit down. Two. 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 You pray to. You know, most man. Anybody else pray? You pray to preach. Okay, so I wasn't a word of prayer. Yes, yeah, it's, it's rough, man. You know, say you go to preach and it's rough. I remember Sister Clark was saying we got to do something as a church, but God worked it out. Anybody ready to step into the next phase of their life? Amen. <laughs> Praise the soul in him. Bridget, you were a sister here who couldn't find a job, you know. Come on now. And when Bridget, she preached the Sunday night on Psalm 27. Come on and the last verse said, wait, that's all wait. Wait. Yes, the very last verse. And she preached and preached. And the very next morning, she put on her clothes and went to the job and said, I'm here to work. The place had turned out done before she used to turn up because she preached about faith the Sunday night. Amen. She put on her clothes. The, the Monday morning I went there and says, they said, who are you? Where are you? I'm here to work. My name is I'm here to work. Yeah. And they said, well, we have an opening. Let's go. Let's do this. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Richard, you got, you got off the mind. You got off the mind. Richard, oh, praise his holy name. Somebody Praise bless the Lord. Praise bless the name of God. Sister Fred, could you read this note for me? Just read the note on the question for me. And tell me what you think about it. This name. Tap your hands, please. Read the note on the question for me. And tell me what you think about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings to everyone in Jesus' name. Greetings. The note says, as we traverse the route to the kingdom of God, we must expect to encounter trials. We were promised an easy journey, but a great destination. Praise him. Praise him. When I was looking down and I was reading the note, when I saw the word destination, I was like, it's like when you put your destination in like a GPS. Yes. And then sometimes the GPS until there's a traffic up on the road. <laughs> you drive to your destination now and you're like, like I go on the 20s, I have to go somewhere. And I'm like, wow, there's, there's so much traffic. I didn't factor in the traffic yeah. on, the, on the route. Mm -hmm. But you book up into this traffic now, and you have to go push your way through it to get to your destination. Man. And that's what the note reminded me of. That you have to go through many things to get to the kingdom of God, but we have to stay the course, fight through the traffic yes. until you get to your destination. I'm riding with Jesus on the hallelujah train. I'm singing and shouting on the hallelujah train. I will not stop at the station for the kingdom is my destination. Y'all don't know it, I'm sorry. I'm riding with Jesus on the hallelujah train. Anybody know it? You don't know it, okay? I'm riding with Jesus on the hallelujah train. I'm singing and I'm shouting on the hallelujah 
But you, you went off course. Backsliders, I'm calling to you. You went off course, but you can't come back on course. Your arms is wide open. Can you find back your path? Praise the soul in this. Somebody give God the glory. Give him a praise in his house. The pit is a part of the package. Praise the soul in this. What is Jeremiah's lamentation? At once, did you have your hand up, Angie? No. Did you have, what is Jeremiah's lamentation at one point in his life? If you have anything on the line, let me know, right? Who's reading? Sister Anne, right? That's Jeremiah's sister Anne and sister Campbell Joe. What is Jeremiah's lamentation at one such point in his life? Jeremiah 15, 15 to 18. And how did Job bemoan his time of prolonged trial? Job 16, 6 to 14. Which one are you reading, Sister Anne? Jeremiah 15, 15 to 18. O oh Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me, and revenge me of my persecutor. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand. For thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuseth to be healed? Will thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as a water that fail? Mm, wow. Sister Anne, what was Jeremiah's lamentation? What was he saying? I, 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 I believe that he's saying... Um, when he was in his speech, his low point, what was yeah, one of the things he was saying? You can see that he's going through um, the, um, his struggles and his, his long suffering. Highlight something that he said that made you know he was suffering. You can see that he was in a lot of pain. He said, take me not away in thy long suffering. Yeah. For thy sake I suffered Rebuke. Perfect Praise his holy name. So he was going to continuous uh, Yes, and like verse 18 says, mm -hmm. Why is my pain perpetual, unending, yeah. and my wound incurable? Oh. So verse 18 really captures his lamentation, his pain. Yes. Praise him. Virgin, so Jeremiah felt like he was in constant pain and that he was wounded and it was uncurable. Sister Campbell. Read Job 8, Job, sorry, 16. Um, it says, Though I speak, my grief is not a sway, and thought I forbear what I am eased, but now he has made me weary, thou hast made me desolate all my company, and thou hast filled me with wrinkles which is witness against me, and my leanness ri rising up in my bearing of spirit witness to my face. He teared me in his wrath, who hated me. He gashed upon me with his teeth. My enemies sharpened his eyes upon me. They have gasped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. They have got gathered themselves together against me. God has delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. Mm. High up at ease, but he has broken me asunder. He has also taken me by my neck and shaken me to the pieces, the pieces, sorry, and set me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder and doeth not spare. He is poured out my gall upon the ground. 
14, he breaketh me with breach, upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. <laughs> My God. Uh, what about Job? Um, you feel like everything was coming um, and, and everything was going wrong. Because he was saying that, the, um, he said, um, and has filled me with wrinkle, witness against me. And then he said that he teared me in his wrath, who ate at me. So it was like so many different things. He was expressing the different things that he was going through, that, um, you know, he was like, my enemy sharpened his eyes upon me. He said, gash it upon me with his teeth. And he said, God has delivered me to the ungodly. Even though he know what, he was righteous in the sight of the Lord, and all that he was going through, and he know that the Lord allowed him to go through it. He said, even though he was going through all of it, if he was expressing how he felt as far as you know the different struggles the different trials that he was going through but the part that i love to he was he said um he says um you know it's maybe his goliath in his life but he knew that the lord will come through for him praise god praise the lord praise him so it'd be like hard takes and pain Jeremiah's lamentation and Job's he bemoaned his he bemoaned his um, prolonged trial by expressing the great pain he went through. Job said he lost his friends. Job said even though I talk, you know what some people know some of so if you're going through something, you can you talk about your feel alright afterward. Job said, even though he spoke, he was not a swing. Break the breach of the man. He said, "You has made me desolate of my company. Man, I'm boxing in his face. Yeah. There was another chapter preacher where the man said, the people that were used to, when he were walk, they used to salute him. No, they mock him. Come on, preach. His world was turned upside down. Everything he lost, everything. That's what he said. He break at me with breach after breach. In chapter one, he said, while he was yet speaking. Yes. And that he mean up breach upon breach. He lost everything. So guess what happened? While he was yet speaking, camels gone. While he was yet speaking, sheep gone. While he was yet speaking, his ten children dead one time. But anybody ever lost ten dollars? Yes. <laughs> anybody ever lost ten dollars? Yes, sir. Anybody remember what they feel when they lose ten? When you lose ten hundred dollars, can I talk about fifty dollars? I said, anybody ever remember? Everybody ever lose ten dollars? Sister Anna got ten dollars. Sister Anna, you ever lost ten dollars on a jive and look back feet? You are walking and look at me walk feet. Anybody want to look through the whole house for ten dollars? Yes. Job lost his ten children. All of them one time. We have the message. And what I noticed here is that Job said, "He run it upon me like a giant." I'll be a shadow in front of him. The thing overwhelming. That's what it means. It's overwhelming. So what I'm saying is that people will go through the pit may feel overwhelming. Oh, yes, We're talking about Jeremiah and Job. Those who go through it and they're telling you it's rough. They feel like Jeremiah felt that like God, God made himself alive because he wasn't coming through for it. And Job felt like God was a giant running upon him, breaching after breach. I'm taking away things from him right after the other, one after the other, two or He feel like he won him by a throat and I shake him up. Job said he saw his wrinkles which were witness against him. Yes. That means he might get told. Come on, man. He might hold him up fast. Very right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings again. Um, I just had a, a quick question based on all of this. Um, since that the pit is a part of the package, 
and the expectation is that everyone is going to go through it. What is my duty if I see, for instance, Brother Rami going through his pit? Uh, I assume the answer is to just pull him out of it because then he doesn't learn anything. But what is my duty in that sense? Brother Jamario, want to respond? What is your duty when somebody's in the pit? Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Um, as brethren, the brother and sister in Christ, we should have each other's back. And if somebody's in a pit, it doesn't matter what pit they're in or what um, issue they're going through, we should have each other's back. We should pray with one another and help one another in the other situation. If I'm making sense to everybody. Yep. Praise we should have each other's back in the other situation. It says, um, <laughs> I don't remember the, the, the verse I'm trying to remember. It said, um, we should ask God for guidance and help out of the pit. It says, I can show the game, see if you can find out the shovel up front to you. So the more that you ask God for help, the more he will bring you out to your situation. Thank you, thank you, Brother Jamal. He said, have each other's back. The camel. We praise the Lord. Praise him. Um, I was thinking that um, when you're going through, sometimes you can't help, even if you want to. Um, you see your sister, you see your brother going through their pit. You can't help, but in a sense, like physically get them out, um, Brother Riley. But you can pray and ask God to give them the strength. And also, you know when that person, in a sense, where you know they are in that situation, you know they are the ones who put themselves in there. You make them learn too and pray for them too. And uh, um, in that sense, like you know, this a person is a spender and then you rent due. Um, you're going to say, um, sis, we've been talking to you and uh, you know, try to get somebody in the church or wherever to get somebody to uh, um, you know, talk to them about finances, how to balance their books and so on. But are what working for you? As a person, you can do that way, but you never get them out by paying their rent. You make them learn and, and, and let them understand, say, you know, sis, you know that, you, you know, you hear the teaching lesson, you get any encouragement, but see it again, this happened to you. So what you can do is um, not leave them by themselves, so to speak. In a sense, some of them still think it is by themselves, but you give them goodly, um, godly advice to encourage them, you know, no matter that same mistake, do better next time. And it doesn't matter what the situation may be. As, our, as brothers and sisters, we don't have to leave no man behind. In a sense, it might seem some people said they leave me by myself because I didn't give you the exact money, brother Romy, and I say, all right, do whatever. Or, you know, whatever that may be. But you also encourage that person to do otherwise you know, might find another second job for that person, you know, to make ends meet. Just different things you can do, but um, I don't say per se you leave that person by itself. And, you, and if it's a situation where you need to pray for that person, or if it's a marital situation where you can't do anything, all you have to do, brethren, I pray and encourage them to get good counseling so that God can work anything because prayer and fasting does work, brethren. We tend to, to say prayer and fasting, but when our situation and our challenges, we tend to don't really believe ourselves that prayer and fasting do, does work. And so you can pray and want to tell all uh, the craziness. When you confess, that person see themselves and confess, then they can start to see their relationship bloom into something wonderful because they, they come to the seminar, they start to build and work on the goodly God, the advice that they're not getting from their, you know, their brethren. And so there's so many ways we can help each other. Uh, and I don't think we need to leave nobody, just leave them by themselves in their pit, so to speak. There is support some way, somehow. Yes, sir. Did you my, I, I, my intake on it, um, based on the question, um, is to to support the person in every way you can. By encouraging, sometimes you give a testimony, you could um, call the person, just just continue to you know, pray with them, 
and show them love because sometimes you you can't you can't take them out of their pit, but you can support them in every way that you can. Um, I think if it's um, in, in different situations, you help them in different situations. But as I said, the main thing is to show your support. Make them lean on your shoulder. Should like cry with them, pray with them, worship with them, encourage them. Tell them a testimony. Tell them your life experience. Because sometimes you always have a life experience that you can express to the other person that they might, you know, be comforted. Because we don't want to be the miserable comforters like we're in a job life. They were, you, and even though you know that what they're going through is them, put it. But sometimes give them a shoulder. Give them a soft pillow, you know, direct them that God will take it through. And sometimes they give them good advice. You you know, you can advise, but you can't really, you know, show them different direction because it's all up to their choice. But, uh, you know, you only can lead them, but you can't read. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Just show, and, but make sure, show them as much love as possible. I'm telling you, when you show love, that you love them and, that, and, and, and encourage them that God is there with you and fast and pray with them. And you know, and that, that's what I'm saying. Because I know I'm based enough on my experience. If I'm going through, if I know I did something wrong, I'm going to need as much encouragement. Even though you repent that you're wrong, I am, I, I, I'm always ready to, to repent that I am wrong, but also you need a shoulder to lean on. Even though you have Jesus as your only friend, but still you need somebody to, to, to support you in your, in your situation. Very well, I think those are the responses. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're the right responses. Brother Jamario said uh, we should have each other's back. Yeah. Sister Kamala and Sister Adi didn't say much different. They, they just put a little bit more icing on it. Uh, it's the same thing. They're saying, lend support. Um, that is why when it's testimony time, give your testimony. testimony. When it's fasting it's time, come and give your yes. testimony. Tell them about, talk about your experiences. Because somebody may need that platform. Amen. That sister can call it a shoulder. And, and, and it's a support system. That's why the church have mentors. The church have prayer partners. The church have different things. Lead the person to the lesson they are supposed to learn from it. I'm, um, I'm learning this late in my ministry about um, um, not all, you don't have to be a hero all the time. Exactly. You don't have to be a hero all the time. Sometimes the brethren, they are going through something. God is processing them. Yes. And sometimes we, we jump so much into people's business and into the, into the um, whatever. We take, we take it over. And, and what, the, what we are learning here is that you now if somebody is hungry, you can't tell them, I'm cold, you can't say, be the one. Yes. So there's a balance that you yes. must reach. I know the words, so I know the scripture. Yeah. You know somebody comes to you have nothing to eat? Don't tell them to eat your cake. <laughs> the, per the, person, the person's cold and I have nothing where to stay. Don't say, I'm, I'm. There's a, don't say God will provide. You must do what you should do. Um, um, yeah, so you're hungry, you're telling them to go back fast. You don't work like that. Um, be considerate. I'm saying strike that balance that God wants you to strike. As I'm saying, Jesus fed the 5,000 um, and, and, and he fed the 4,000 and whatnot. I'm saying to us as the church, make sure we do your part. Be a platform. Be a person that you can lean on. As Sister Anna and Sister Campbell said, lead them to the lesson that they're supposed to learn. Tell them, Brethren, we, we, I'm telling you, um, and it's not about finances only. Pits are not only financial pits. It could be emotional pits. It could be, um, it could be, um, as I said, different challenges. Whatever challenge a person is facing. Um, say, say, before I respond, I will pray about it and I'll get back to you. Ask God, what should I say to this person? How am I going to uplift them and lift? How am I going to bless them? And then, um, also, if you are a true friend to somebody, tell them tell them what they're doing wrong. Yes, yes, be true, be nice, be true. Yeah, they can tell them what they're doing wrong, because you are their friend. Yeah. And if you tell them what they're doing wrong, and they don't want to talk to you, they weren't your friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because if you're too nice, sometimes they think it's still more nice. Tell them, tell them the truth. Truth, truth. Tell back off a target. Yes. Leave target alone. Come on. 
Monday. And Walmart and we'll explain to them. And, 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 and JC, Penny and Sears, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave it alone. Break up, break up, break up, break up your relationship for two years. And you drive by the mall, tell, tell them we were once in love, but we are, we are not together anymore. Praise his own name. Tell your friend to give me a card. Give me a card and we keep it for you. Yeah, man. No, no, tell your friend to I, listen to me. Give me a card and we keep it for you. For three weeks or four weeks, you don't use it. Alright. That was just one side. And that's just financial side. There are many other sides to this. The pit is many other things. Praise his own name. As, as we walk with. You are you satisfied, by right? As we walk in God's will, what kind of confirmation? Do we have that our trials build and prepare us for greater blessings? Lamentations 3 31 to 33, Romans 8 27 to 28. Two readers. Read? Who's reading? It's the camera and Brother Taylor. Who's reading what? I read the Lamentations 3 first. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Psalms of Solomon and Isaiah Jeremiah Lamentation. Romans 3, 31 to 33. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve, grieve the children of men. Free as him. So what confirmation do we have, Sister Campbell? God, God does not grieve us, praise the Lord. Amen. He is there for us. Though he cause grief, he has compassion. Amen. Though he afflict, he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Brother Taylor read here is in Romans 8, 27 to 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the calling according to his purpose, for them who he for whom he did for now. He also did predestinate so the, to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many nations, many, many virgins. Um, who's supposed to be 27 28? It's like you read to 29, but it's okay. Reading is good. Praise him. Brother Taylor, what, what, um, do we have, what confirmation do we have that our child should, be, should prepare us and build us a greater blessings? Yes, sir. All things work together for good. Bridget, that, that, is, that, is, that is something you should walk in. That is like a fight. That's a, that's a fight, fight phrase. All things work together for good that they, to them that are the called. Yes? Are you called? Did God call you? Sister Miller, did God call you? Did God call you? No, you're asking me, you tell me. You just don't have to be worse. If you roll your eyes and look at me like, what is he, what is he asking me that? Then, then we have this long conversation versus if you say, yes, Pastor, God called me. We're done. Did God call you? That's what I'm talking about, man. God called you. I was there when he called you. Walk in your calling. Because all things work together for good to them that are the call. That's a special class, you know, the call. According to his purpose. So God had a purpose for you because he called you. Amen, sir. When my father called me, Maria, he had a plan for me. Come on, sir. Go yeah. and do so and so. He has, he has something for me to go do. 
When God called you, sister, just say, God have a plan for you to go do something. God will just call people just to say, if, if you have vice. Sometimes I hear my wife would say to the kids, I'm like, um, what's her phrase? She used to tell them all the time. Um, she always says something when she called them and they didn't, they don't respond. I'm not saying hi, hi. yes. She always says, I'm not saying hi. Jeremy! I said, Jeremy, yes, mom, I'm not saying, I wasn't saying hi to you, no. Oh. So God is not saying hello to you as a purpose for you. Brother Riley, that is a plan for you, a purpose. Praise the Lord. Brother Roach, are you ready to find, find it? Some of us don't know what it is. So if you feel stuck in a rut, ask God, what was the purpose? Why did you call me? What is my purpose? What is my plan? What is your plan for my life? But you know, I remember as a young child, I stood in Sabbath school and I raised my hand. And I said, Bishop, for my baptized, I don't know what's going on. He said, what happened? I said, I don't see, I don't have no trial, no tribulation, no persecution, no testing. I'm not seeing on. What's going on? He's a hard one. He's a brother man, it's coming. He said, he said, enjoy the freedom now, but it's coming. I hope I don't know if anybody was in group that day when Bishop said to me, it's coming. Because I was saying we baptize and everything does Chris. Food I go on, school I go on. Hey! And something is just here, everything perfect. <laughs> everything was good in Murray. And Gretchen, when it started, oh my goodness. Preach up, preach up, I was telling the preacher that, that I feel like sometimes, I feel like sometimes this means it's like, it's like David, there's just war, preacher. Spiritual blood in your hands, it's all this war. Everything is just fighting, fighting, fighting. And I remember as a young Christian when I asked the bishop, when will my child start and dying for this thing to come? When will it start? And he encouraged us to stop. He said, that's, he said, he's young. He knew I was just, so he knew I was really young. The man could see, the, the man could see the Ivan Gilbert, he could see Katrina, he could see all the storms that would blow through. And he said, just wait, don't rush it, it will come. As you grow, the Lord will give you more, and give whatever you can be here, it will come. And virgin it did. And, and there's more yeah. to come. Yeah. If I think that I'm alright, virgin, there's more to come. And I'm just asking God to prepare each of our hearts. For when the tough time comes and the pit, we'll be ready to go. Let's, let's hear the last one now. What is Peter's prayer? What is Peter's prayer for us as we endure? First Peter 5, 6 to 10. And how does Jesus end this discourse? Matthew 24, 12 to 13. I want Peter. James. Peter, the Hebrew name. Peter, First Peter, five, six to ten. Mike, Mike, microphone. Brother Taylor, testing one, two, three, four, five. Praise the Lord. First Peter, five, verse, verse six to ten. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions that are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but God, but the God of grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that he had suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, establish, strengthen, settle you. Thank you, sir. I will answer the question. What, what is Peter's prayer for us to endure? Um, he asks us to endure. Um, he says that um, resist. Uh, endure all, the, all that you may go through because he said resist steadfast in the faith. That's right, that's so, um, I'm supposed to make a person. 
No, he says, what is Peter's prayer is that we should stay humble under God's hand. Yeah. Oh, because he will exalt us. Exactly. He says, after suffering, you will what? Strengthen, Strengthen and establish. establish. Strengthen, settle, and you will be established. Or established. Uh, who, you should cast your cares upon him too, yes? So, when you're in the pit, stay humble, yes? When you're in the pit, uh, understand that after the suffering, he's going to establish strength and keep you. All right, Deacon, what you got? Matthew 24, 12, and 13. How does Jesus end this whole lesson? How does he end it? And because of iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold. But he that, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. How does Jesus end it? Endurance to the end. He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. If you endure through your pit journey, if you endure through it, like what Joseph did, the end destination will be the kingdom. God bless you, God keep you in Jesus' name. Mm, yes. You pray one time, and it never come true. Don't believe that the answer is no. 